Welcome back to the treehouse. Hey, Grizzly. Welcome back, dear. I'm glad to see you. How are we all feeling today? Hmm. I'm actually a bit exhausted. <laughs> I'm actually a bit exhausted, but that's okay. We're just gonna kind of roll with what we have today, which is why I decided to paint. We're gonna see how much energy I have to paint. Um, we may actually, maybe, depending on how I feel energetically, we might actually uh, end up playing an art game. There's a game on Steam. I think it's called East Shade. Anyway, it's an art game where you you are a traveling painter, and you are finding your way in the world and uh, commemorating some art pieces to your mother who had passed. So. I might do that later, I'm not sure. We'll see how we feel. I do want to get started on my painting a bit though today. Hi Taff, Taff and that, welcome in dear. You're feeling very energetic, Grizzly, really? Ah. Hey Techno Clerk, welcome back in, hun. Hi Internet of Hings, and hi Sarah, hi, glad to see you. Have I tried the pass pa pass par out game the starving artist i think that's been a suggested art game before in discord i think that's been a suggested game east shade yeah or is it earth i'd have to let me go to steam Is it East Shade? <sighs> I think you did, Dino, but my boyfriend at the time also did as well. I'm opening it. I'm seeing what it's called. Is it called East Shade? Or am I just from... I don't know why Earth Shade is coming up too. I could just be changing what it's called. No, it is called East Shade. Okay. Can people, hi JC, welcome in dear. Can people uh, upload their own artwork into Occupy White Walls yet? Yes. I haven't quite figured that out yet because I've been so focused on my YouTube and my meditation videos that I have not quite spent time figuring out how to do that part yet. But yes, you can. And, um, Going back in and putting our artwork in that game is still on the to-do. <laughs> it's still on the to-do list. <laughs> but I have heard of the Starving Artist game. That one should be fun. It's got pretty graphics. It was pretty, yeah. Hi, Eddie. Welcome back, dear. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, I found it as East Shade. Pretty graphics, too. Yeah, it is. Pretty nice. Yeah. Good day, Luna. Hey, Moose Crosby. Welcome in, hun. So, I have before. Hi, Lucky. With thumbs. Welcome in. It'd be cool to make a gallery for different streamers' art. It would be, yeah. I've thought about making a tree exhibit in that game. Maybe we'll do white walls. Because <laughs> we haven't done it for a while. Um, thank you, Matthew. You still have the code to use. I do, JC, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Ian Lee. Welcome in, hon. Welcome in. And I thought about doing a... Because uh, I have a mountain exhibit in there that you guys haven't seen. I finished the waterfall. There's a lot in there. That didn't used to be in there. That's in there now. 
but I really wanted to do a big, a giant tree, but it cost a lot of money to do stuff in that game, so, I don't know, we'll see what we, we'll see what we end up doing. We're doing a painting today. Yes, so this is going to be, um, we're going to start adding in an astral body today and do this painting, this energy painting. Do you want nature music? <laughs> okay. rhythms. This one has more consistent nature. This one has nature sounds over music. This one has a little bit of music, but mostly nature sounds. So which one would you like, Eddie? The one with a little, a lot of nature and a little music? Or a little nature and a lot of music? No, it's not my own. No, this is a commission piece. Hey, what they want? Good morning, hun. No, it's not my own astral body, no. <laughs> no, this is a commission piece. So someone had painted, um, had commissioned me to paint their energy. And so it started as painting their energy. But as time has progressed, um, their astral body has wanted to come through and one of their angels wants to come through too so that's the next thing that we're working on with this piece lots of nature yes <laughs> am I going to do divination later? Mm, usually on Wednesday, Wednesdays I don't do too much divination usually on Wednesdays we just kind of paint chill, hang out, um, channel points though, if you have channel points, I do still allow you to use channel points on Wednesdays for readings, but Wednesday is kind of our, our chill day where we just kind of hang out. It's been so long since you last astral travel. Can I say, can I say really? really? This is earth rhythms, lots of nature sounds. <laughs> lots of nature. And I did notice somebody's, two people's readings yesterday I couldn't get to, so I did give you your channel points back, because I missed you, so sorry. <laughs> the rewards are really hard to manage. <laughs> For me, I don't know why. <laughs> they just really are. <laughs> hmm. How do you know if you're astral traveling? It's tricky sometimes. Sometimes you just have to get familiar with the process of how it works. You just have to be familiar with your own dreams. You have to know what a what what it feels like. Does it feel like you just observing something you don't understand or does it feel like a little empty like observing emptiness that is in my mind uh, observing a dream with without empty with empty intention I don't know how else to explain this <laughs> um that's kind of what subconscious dreaming, like pouring out of your subconscious for the day, the day's events, kind of feels like. If you, <laughs> Eddie, <laughs> if you feel like, hmm. I'm trying to think of other examples of what they all how they all feel different.
I almost feel like a lot of the time, at least for me, if things are really broken and very energetic when you wake up, like your memory of them, or even, even as you're experiencing them, they feel very energetic and broken. I would say that is astral traveling. But you can also have very fluid astral traveling too. So it just depends. I've actually had an astral dream before where, and maybe an example will help, where I used to project out in the middle of the night and just kind of float over the house and like check on everybody. So I'd go into everybody's room and make sure they were safe and just kind of like peer over them, make sure they were okay. Just a little check-in, right? This was something I did every night. I would project out and kind of do a check-in on the house, right? Make sure everybody's okay. Well, there was one night I did that and it felt different because when I went to check on my parents, my dad was not in the bed. And I remember thinking, that's really strange. Hmm. Why would my dad not be asleep right now? <laughs> and so I actually woke up. I woke myself up, got out of bed, went to my parents' room to go check on my dad. He actually was not in the bed. So I walked around the house and I ended up eventually finding him. Um, he actually needed to really have a heart-to-heart -heart talk at that time. He was not emotionally doing well. And so he was like shocked that I had somehow known that he needed somebody to talk to. And so sometimes it can be Sometimes you're not even aware of it until you wake up and you notice things in life seem to match up with what you were dreaming, right? So sometimes you don't know when it's happening. You only get confirmation and clarity by living life. Mm. It's good to see you. Hi, Beller Music. Welcome back, hon. So I think it depends. Every person is going to be different, right? It depends on what your goal is while you're projecting. When I was young, I was very focused on just checking on everybody, making sure they're okay. Like guarding everybody. Are you sleeping sound? Are you happy? Are you peaceful? Do you need a hug? <laughs> but I did that a lot. A new Halloween movie? Do you know? A new one? Yeah, I would, Matthew. <laughs> you do? Hmm. <laughs> It's pretty fun. Was it fun? Like a stupid fun? Mm, that's all right. We need all kinds of entertainment, right? <laughs> Hi, CJ. Welcome in, dear. Glad to see you. Mm. Hi, Miss Umbra. Welcome in. Hi. And hi, Eclipse. Glad to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Do I ever enjoy relaxing with ambient music? Yes. Like, all the time. <laughs> like, all the time. <laughs> I'm doing really well, CJ. How are you today? You forgot that it's morning? Yeah, it's morning. It's actually, like, afternoon, technically. 
My eight hour drum video is good background music for working. Thank you, Miss Umbra. Hey, Narwhals. Welcome back, honey. Dino is an Adam Sandler fanboy. That's all right. He needs fans. <laughs> That's okay. I did, I did uh, notice that that one has like my meditation videos get the most views on YouTube. So that will be a thing that I continue to grow for YouTube in specific. I'll still put old streams on there in case, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I feel like old streams should never just, I don't want the content of the treehouse to just like vanish into nothingness. So old streams will probably always exist on YouTube. <laughs> Even though nobody watches, uh, very few people watch, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that part. <laughs> and thank you for your compliment, Narwhals. A version of me in an RPG can send my characters to get some guidance. I mean... If you want to think of life as a video game, or a program, maybe you are. I would always say, um, how do I want to say this? I always say I would be like the like the painter healer where you just like come in and get like heal spells but also makes like teleportation paintings or something like that thank you for the follow mama Jer. to another dimension. It's actually an energy painting. I actually have two on my easel. There's this one. So we are going to put the astral body here. So the crown is almost, this is almost like an activated crown basically because the head shape is going to be here and then the shoulders will drop off and then we're also going to put a some type of angel over here. So it's going over here. Mm. Mm. Nobody is getting a body painted today. Only an astral body. <laughs> this other one, this second one, has been with us for a while. I don't know if you guys remember. Some of you might remember this painting. This one was hanging out with us for a long time. This was, this one's called, the forest fairy help theme this one. This one's called soul flames. This one. You guys remember when we were painting the flames and the little mini butterflies? This one has turned into this. <laughs> This one's not done yet. We're not done with this one yet. But this is the second one I've been working on in my own time with our portal. Our flames and our coal. Our coal and our flames at the same time kind of coming together. Maybe they're fighting. Or. <laughs> Rawr. <laughs> We're not sure. Some people say it looks like insects, like bugs. But that painting is very energetic. That one has a lot going on. <laughs> but that's been another one I've been working on. But today, specifically, has been Is going to be focused on that astral body. 
something like a dark blue black outline something kind of solid that we soften up with a little bit of white to make it kind of translucent but defined a, a very thin defined line so it'll be interesting and then we'll put lots of like uh, dust like galaxy space dust kind of in that body so it's gonna be interesting so when I paint I don't have any idea what I'm gonna paint I don't have any idea I don't have any concept unless it's a commission piece so with this commission piece I do so with a commissioned art piece I do a meditation or sometimes multiple meditations right and I set the intention to receive information in regards to what this painting is going to be right so when you get a commission you're basically asking me to paint on behalf of the universe <laughs> something specifically just for you and this one ended up being they wanted to focus on their energy in specific so i said okay perfect i can narrow that down a bit and so we had i got the feeling of lots of ribbons and the feeling of a galaxy and that was really all i was picking up on at the time was ribbons and the ribbons didn't look like this it was just ribbons So, I started sharing what images I could find to relay a very basic idea of what I was getting. They approved, so then we start painting, right? And that's when everything else starts coming through. So instead of straight ribbons, I got bended, curved ribbons right here, bended, curved ribbons, all coming from the center. And then I was, as I was painting, I got extra ribbons here. So we have almost like these star ribbons coming out. And they have movement, right? Because the tails, so they have a movement to them because of their little tails. So that started to come through too. And then I got the, you can see the spiral in the background, right? So that came through too. So we always, we never, we have a very small idea of what we're doing. Very, very small idea of what we're doing. And thank you for the follow, Sassy. And hi, Blue Water, welcome back. You love the painting? Mm hmm yeah. <laughs> Have you ever channeled the other beings who painted through me in our walls? Mm -hmm. Maybe my higher self. Maybe somebody else has come in every now and then. But my guides and my angels always guide me a little bit. So they'll like drop something like for me to pick up. They'll be like, what about, what about this? I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. And I just run with it. So I wouldn't say they, like anybody has to like come in and like really kind of take over what's going on. I listen well enough where that doesn't have to happen. Like, if that makes sense. Yeah, I listen well enough where that doesn't have to be the case, you know? Yeah, so the other painting... was done and started a long time ago. And it's been interesting to see how that one has changed too. So it's always interesting to watch the... beginning of a painting, honestly. Because... 
<laughs> that's how you kind of see that we actually do not have any idea what we're doing. We just kind of throw paint down and the paintings almost have their own story. So in the beginning, you understand maybe the overall theme or overall feeling of what we're going with. Like you only get a certain part, piece of the puzzle as you go. And then by the time you get so far into the painting, you're like, oh my God, there's this whole story here. And then you start flowing the whole story together in a way that's cohesive, right? And then, and then it's extra fun because when you get to the end of the painting where you're doing a lot of final details, um, maybe waiting for any last minute sparks of inspiration, that's when the whole painting really starts to like really make sense and have a very specific energy and, and like message in it basically. I am enjoying myself smiles, yeah. Have I ever painted a butterfly, Glumen? Yeah, right there. My portfolio is up here all the time. So these are all the different paintings we've made throughout the whole stream. So we used to paint very specific uh, physical representation of, I guess, it, very like life grounded earth symbology for things. And with these last two paintings, ever since we started doing galaxy type work, things have become, how do I say it? Things have become more abstract, more energetic, more interpret, interpreted, interpretive, yeah. You didn't notice that? Yeah, it's up there. So you can see all the old artwork we've done together <laughs> up, up in that corner. Maybe I should list it as portfolio. Maybe that would help. <laughs> you like abstract creationists? Yeah, I do too. So I'm going to mix our some dark blue here on my palette. And we're going to start outlining that the astral body <laughs> with our nice dark blue color and thank you for the follow Dank Smile says your energy is so warm and the music and the voice is like therapy on I am sending lots of genuine love so you're just picking up on that You feel a lot of positive energy from that piece. Yeah, so that's what a lot of people have gotten commissioned pieces for, is their sacred spaces or their bedrooms or their meditation rooms. They, usually my art goes somewhere there, you know? or if they have a very specific theme. Half the fun is watching, not knowing what you're gonna get. A bit is half the fun. And watching something really beautiful kind of unfold is also another really fun part. Because you're just like, oh man, that's so great. I already loved it before, but now this new thing is coming in. Oh, man, I really like this now. Which is exactly how I feel as I'm painting it. 
I'm like, wow, this painting's already really cool. And then something else will come in like, why don't we try to add this? Then I get all like, excited because I'm like, yes, let's do that, actually, yeah. Hmm. So I'm going to do like a little outline first and then we'll really get into bringing it forward. But I'm just going to do the outline first. Hey Alyssa! Hi sweetie, welcome in. Art from the heart, nothing says it better. Thank you Sarah. Yeah, that really is what it is. Just gonna put a little bit of the dark blue down. Maybe throughout the whole space. Hi Harry, welcome in, hun. Glad to see you. <laughs> so beautiful, yeah. Hmm. This is gonna be tricky. <laughs> Getting the shape down just how I want it is gonna be tricky. I think I'm going to use a bigger brush. <laughs> Glad to have you in. Ari, it's been a minute. How are you doing there? Good morning and evening, Diana and Young Crowd. Hey, Emma. Welcome in, dear. I'm glad to see you. I think we'll make this darker first.
We're just gonna make it darker and darker. This is gonna take a minute though. <laughs> this isn't gonna go very fast. Cause it's gonna be very subtle, a very subtle change. Thank you, Bel Air, for your compliment. Harry says, I'm doing well. How are you? And how's the chat? And we're doing really well today. We're just kind of painting an astral body. So I'm just going in now and painting a very watered down blue layer on top of what we've already had on the canvas. Trying to push really light with my brush because I don't want to lift up any of what we've already placed on the canvas. I don't want to move it. I just want to make it darker. <laughs> That's what we're focusing on. Just making it a tiny bit darker than what it was. <laughs> Hi, Diva. Welcome in, honey. Glad to see you. Hi. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's all right. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> You've added to the suggestion box how I've helped you, Alyssa. Thank you so much. Yeah, so a suggestion box I made available because um, sometimes you're not sure if people who do this kind of work are trustworthy. Like there's a suspicion sometimes with it. And so I feel like the more positivity we share about good that can come from a community and a stream like this, the better. So that is really what it's for. It's to show people that part of us. So give me one second and I will be right back. So that, that is what the suggestion box is for, to bring a little bit of, a lot of positivity to what we do as a community. So this could be even, I know in the community box says, how have I helped you? But this could even be the stream helps you in one way or another, right? I feel welcome in this community of people. I feel accepted just by knowing that I'm not alone would also be enough to put in there, you know? So yes, if you are interested in sharing positivity or a thank you, or um, you wanna share how the tree house has aided you the suggestion box is for that and thank you emma for that gift sub to diva hunt thank you so much that's very kind of you very kind hype hype yeah you got a ticket yeah Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so if you're subscribed, I 
we'll probably end up doing the raffle tomorrow night. I really have to write that down though to end it because I'm so bad at it. <laughs> so bad at it. It's gone on for at least a week longer than it should have. The raffle has. Because <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember to end it. And thank you, Ninja, for the follow hunt. Welcome to the treehouse, dear. And the host, thank you so much, Alyssa. Hmm. The do see you part of, of all as my own family by receiving mainly female support, being asked who I am as big by oh by gender and more all is me paying back in return. That's so nice, Alyssa, dear. That's good. That's good. You didn't know what the tickets are for? Yes, they're for the raffle. <laughs> so if you want a physical, if you want some of those physical objects from our treehouse, you can enter the raffle. But you have to be subscribed or use a gift sub that you've gotten. And thank you, Ninja, for the bits, hun. So yeah, that is why I made that. Because I realized there's, there can be uncomfortable suspicion in what I do. So hopefully a little bit of that can be taken care of. I feel like if we flood it with positivity, and genuine examples of help that's only going to lift everybody up, I feel. Especially people who are new, who maybe are a bit uncomfortable. Like they like the energy, but something's just kind of, maybe sometimes we're a little much for them. <laughs> Which is okay. Which is okay. Which is okay sometimes. Do you have to be a part of it? No, I'd never make you do anything. <laughs> Come on, you know who I am. Come on. Come on. working a lot better. It's starting to stand out a bit. Shoulders are a bit wide, but that's all right. If I make the head slightly bigger, we don't have to worry about those really wide shoulders. <laughs> hmm. Stop influencing me. Hi, Wheel. Welcome in, sweetie. Hi, Wheel. How are you doing? You want to really give me a hug right now, Alyssa? Aww, you're okay, honey. Your heart is the main emotion to my sadness that continues to grow happy from those who show love. Yeah, there's definitely, 
those around us who are, we only care about love, you know? And the more we stop fighting with each other about dumb stuff, that doesn't, that doesn't, that really doesn't matter or shouldn't matter about how we feel about each other. Those people exist, right? And there's a, right now there's a room full of those people. <laughs> Emma says, stop influencing me. <laughs> it's your way I don't show or pay to make a streamer happy. It's my personality that's free of charge. That's true, Alyssa, yeah. <laughs> Rather than have a bad rainy day by being the sunshine to enlighten the mood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You like to mm, be the sunshine and be the light, the bright shiny light. Mm. It just kind of comes in. Mm. And receiving the support of me being who I am has helped me grow more. Well, yeah. Once you feel accepted, you feel safe within yourself, right? And so then you want to shine brighter, right? It's a natural thing, I think. I'm glad you're doing well, Wheel. EMC says, you look like a teddy bear with my hair. <laughs> my hair looks like a teddy bear. Teddy bear ears today. And hi, car. Welcome in, sweetie. <laughs> Glad to see you. <laughs> hmm. And EMC, thank you so much for your subscription, dear. That helps me a lot. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> a two-month streak of good vibes. Mm. Yes, please. <laughs> you would just like a sandwich? I'm still eating my tiramisu from last night. Cause that's how I work. <laughs> mm. I will literally eat leftovers until they're gone. Like literally. I will keep eating the leftovers until they're all gone. <laughs> mm. You do think it looks like teddy bear ears? Mmm. Interesting. Interesting. Astro project a sandwich. Now we need 3D printers for that. What you want is to actually physically eat a sandwich. An astral projected sandwich would not satisfy your physical body. making jokes that 3D printer printers were really invented with the intention of being able to digitally send food to each other because I can't think of a single person who talks about food and somebody else doesn't want it sent straight to their house. Mm -hmm. Our Earth Rhythm CD is done. Do we want to do the other nature one? Nature CD would be right to play today, too. Hmm. 
That's an amazing idea. I've always been saying that. That 3D printers really are going to start printing, uh, <laughs> printing food. <laughs> Be like, I just faxed you something. Yeah, grandma's cookies. That Aunt Betty is the only one who can manage to make the same way. Uh. <laughs> Faxing over grandma's cookies. Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> I remember being young and talking about sending that through the internet, sending food through the internet. Can you just email me some of the donuts from the office, please? Please, can you just email them to me? <laughs> I know I'm not in the main office, and I know the main office has donuts. Can you just shove one in an email, please? This is a thing. This is a thing that has been an idea for a long time. I feel we are very, very close to actually wanting to do it. <laughs> no, it could never actually replace the same, this actual thing. No. But it doesn't mean we won't gosh darn try. It won't mean we won't, it doesn't mean we won't try. Hey, Mana, welcome in, sweetie. Glad to see you. <laughs> yeah, Moose agrees. Mm-hmm. You may have a sunshine personality. You've gone through phases of the moon with my star shining so bright to enlighten each of the constellations. Yeah, that's how it works. Finding your own balance. I do think we'll listen to nature's symphony anyway. 3D printing in 2032. We can technically already 3D print quite a lot. Or were you saying that's when we're going to start trying to 3D print food? <laughs> Hi, Anna. Welcome in, sweetheart. What a conversation. <laughs> What a, what a topic. What a topic. This is definitely looking a bit darker. <laughs> One step closer to Star Trek style replicators? That's true. I could see that. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. You and your conversations. <laughs> we Wednesdays are fun. We never, we never really know what we're going to talk about on Wednesday. I didn't hear all of that, so I don't know if someone mentioned it, but KFC is working on 3D printing vegan chicken nuggets. <laughs> Dapping that, wow. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, we. I've been talking for years about 3D printing food, like digitally sending food that you can actually eat. So I could definitely see people having 3D printers where there's like some type of bio-edible ink. Because let's think about this. There's already chemist, chemists who make up combinations, alchemical combinations to make like f the fake flavoring. Right? We already know this is a thing. Fake mint, fake banana, fake grape. I hate fake grape. It's probably my least favorite. Fake and banana. I hate fake banana too. <laughs> but fake grape is the worst. <laughs> In my opinion. Anyway, 
we already know this is a thing. So if you had your own 3D printer that made some type of bio, bio edible printing product, plus adding in like your own flavor additives to that mix, I could definitely see us actually printing f food, you know, you just transfer over the printing file for whatever food you wanted to print out. <laughs> this could actually be a thing. <laughs> it makes you happy, just like the replicators from Star Trek. Yeah, Grizzle. Grizzle, yeah, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> fake lime is the worst. It tastes like floor cleaner. Mm, yeah. I don't like fake grape. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, Sarah is really great. Anna, I agree. Fake grape is a great band name, Car. Is that what I should call my band? Fake grape? No, I want to name it something cool. I don't like fake grape. <laughs> Your boyfriend interviewed at a place that makes artificial flavors. My science teacher in high school. Or was it middle school? I don't remember anymore. She was a chemist. And she worked with combining alchemical mixtures to make artificial flavors. That was her that was her other job. Most fake fruit is nasty to me. <laughs> then call it original grapes. OG. Ooh, it could be called OG for short. Mm, I like this. OG for original grapes. Because nobody likes fake grape. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. That's so funny. <gasps> oh god. Wow. That is so funny. Wow. Oh, that is hilarious. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Ew, it sends shivers. That's really funny. It's enough. Scientists are genetically modifying foods, but 3D printed food is just disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there could be a nice, healthy way to do it, but yeah, nothing beats actual food, right? Like, grown from the ground. <laughs> but it's just nice to think about the ways in which we could I think that could be used in a really good way you know if we really wanted that kind of thing could be used in a really really good way but yeah I'm not really for genetically modified food or a bunch of pesticides or yeah I get that I get that too But I do think there could be a nice, healthy way to do it. As consumers, we would just have to really not purchase out of novelty and purchase out of the benefit like the beauty of what it should be because sometimes we buy from the novelty of something a lot of the time we buy for the novelty of something and because it's a novelty and that made a lot of money there's not really an interest in expanding it beyond that because the money has already been made so it would have to be I don't know. 
We'd have to be careful. <laughs> You're moving overseas, Alyssa? Really? Get a roto tiller and grow your own. Yeah. Grow your own food. Wouldn't have to worry about the grocery store necessarily if you did that. Growing your own food. Plus, anybody who's ever had a garden knows. Oh my gosh, you get way more than you ever need. <laughs> you have to you have to hunt people down to give away everything that you've produced from your garden. Like you have to basically hand off all your extra. You know? <laughs> Did I ever have a garden? Yes, but it's been a long time. It's been a long time. I've mostly done herbs. This is definitely standing out much better now. At least when you grow your own, you know it isn't sprayed with weird stuff. That's true. You know what's going into it. Yeah. You are more in control. Thank you for the work, Alex. You do like it when I do the buns, Anna. Thank you. <laughs> You're gonna be moving soon, Alyssa? Because with America, you have chill vibes from my spine that's going to get worse with our society. Hmm, is that so? I'm not making a prediction just here. Not, It's not cutting f it for me anymore because I just want to be away from the craziness. Hmm. People aren't waking up to realize how America has lied so much to be the country we are today. Just can't take it anymore with all the research I've done. Becoming more spiritual and it's just heartbreaking to say the least.
it doesn't have to get worse. If you woke up to this, Alyssa, imagine how many other people are waking up to that. And it can be unnerving to have everything that you ever thought change. And there are a lot of us, I feel, who feel how you feel, Alyssa. But we still don't share because we feel isolated still. I guarantee it. There's a lot of people who feel exactly like you do, Alyssa, who just aren't saying anything. Because what do you even say? What, what do you even say? What do you even say? Sometimes you don't even know what to say. Mm. Yeah, Sarah, yeah. So I do think there's a lot of us just kind of waiting. Feeling how we feel and waiting, and that's okay. Wherever you are in what's happening in the world is exactly where you need to be because shifts big ones can take a lot of energy and when things are shifting some of us need to let ourselves settle for a longer period of time than others. Some of us are really good at shifting and moving right in with the change. And we're almost like ahead of the game. <laughs> Some of us are like, mm, okay, that happened. Mm, well, all right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take that, shift and move forward and be a little bit of a step ahead. Some of us are shifting parts and not others, and that's okay. Some of us are just absorbing everything and just waiting to see how we want to feel about it before we make our decisions. And some of us haven't got to that part of realizing what we wanna do with it is our choice. Some people haven't got to that part yet and they're just feeling and they don't know how to stop feeling or shift their feeling. And that's okay. Wherever you are, don't beat yourself up about where you're at. If you're ready to change where you are, then you can. Mm-hmm. It's okay, Alyssa. It's all right. <laughs> You're okay. You got reminded of the atom orbital mode, Mana? And your picture reminds you of it, does it? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe in some way that's what it is. <laughs> I have yet to be aware of.
I'm one, Alyssa, who understands, and this might help you too, that the person who says they can't and they can are both right. The people who think that something must be so create a story where that must be so. Which is why I'm saying wherever people are at is okay for them. And we have to understand that about people because if we're trying to force people to expand to a different story before they're ready it only causes pain to us and it only causes pain to them we do best to help by being an example Because people are going to notice those who seem to be okay through everything going on and those who are not. And eventually, the ones who are ready to start being okay will be finding out why so many of us are doing well when they're not. It's going to trigger something to, well, what are they doing that makes this not a huge deal not that it's not a huge deal but how are they handling it so much better or more serenely is really the word I want to use and thank you for following Duck Exactly, Alyssa, yeah. So it's about understanding who's ready and who's not. Because sometimes we expel our energy on people who are just... They don't want to change. And it's the same thing with healing. It's the same thing with seeing people do habits that we know are not healthy for them. But they want to do that. It's the same thing with trying to help those people. You can bring a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. It's the same thing. Different. Different background story. But it's the same situation. That's true, Ian Lee, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you just writing it, Ian Lee? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And sometimes it's power of suggestion, right? If everybody's drinking from the river, people who aren't thirsty might eventually start going, hmm, actually, you know what? A drink does sound pretty nice. And you thought they would never drink. You thought they would never drink.
Mm -hmm. That's all we can do, Alyssa. Because the ones that were ready, are ready will come find us. recognize us when we're being our true authentic self all the time right they only recognize our light when regardless of who they are regardless of what's going on regardless of anything regardless of what we expect them to see in us we must still be that light or they won't recognize us. Hi, Creed. Welcome in, dear. Now is not the time to dim our lights. Now is the time to be brighter. my hair buns again really <laughs> hi pega welcome in hun how are you i'm glad to see you mm -hmm. you agree with being brighter what they want mm -hmm. yep you may troll me emma <laughs> but i like the thing you like the things that i say i'm glad you like the things that i say sometimes JCL, welcome in, dear. How long did it take to paint? Who knows? I lose track of time. Who, who really knows? <laughs> Somebody would have to go and count. Watch the old footage and count. the garden, by the way. Very starchy. Uh, starch? Start? Ski and hudge? You mean the painting? <laughs> it is looking almost too blue. I'll have to put some purple in there. Eileen's gonna be open and share because they know how supportive and amazing everyone is here. In Ian Lee's personal life, she never thought that she would have had severe depression. At one point, she wanted to take her life, but then she asked her boyfriend what keeps him going in life and why does he want to live in the world? And he had an answer that melted her heart. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hours, hours, and hours, and hours, and hours. Oh, cardigan. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, what? Gardenia? Like, I was like thinking about maybe the thing looked like a flower. waiting for Ian Lee to finish 
Maybe their boyfriend had said something specific that helped them. Start putting some purple down. You write slow, Ian Lee. Hey, that's okay. <laughs> you didn't see the world the way that he did at all. Mm -hmm. He told me that life is full of beautiful things and bad ones as well. He's right. So, Ian Lee, you were just focused a little too much on what was bad and maybe not quite enough on what was beautiful so he kind of just wanted to say validate you were right but at the same time show you the other things you weren't quite focusing on as well questions is a great place to be in, yeah. Hi, pumpkin. Welcome in, dear. Hi. <laughs> Lovely hair. Thank you. <laughs> like, if I thought about it, really, there are a lot of people that love me, and they would be really hurt if I was gone. So he took my hand, and we went on a walk. Mm -hmm. Focusing a little bit mm, more Are you bad energy today, guys? Seems to have missed a greeting and a follow-up from me. Oh, sorry, guys. No, I probably just missed it. Oh, super sneaky hugs. Oh, sorry. No. I just missed you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Poor guys. Needs an extra hug. Mm, so sorry, dear. Oh. I lost you in the wave of chat. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, don't ever feel bad to add me. Especially if I've missed you a couple times. <laughs> I can't wait for the raffle to be finished because then the chat slows down. Sometimes Street Labs has too much to say. When you guys get washed away in the wave of chat. <laughs> mm, you're welcome. There's some hugs. Mm. Washed away in the wave of chat. <laughs> Try to make you more present, Ian Lee, in what was available to you now. She would always say, Pumpkin. <laughs> that is pretty cute.
used to like saying it that way as an adult. It is kind of fun. <laughs> Someone say purple. Purple. From the stream title, you thought I was doing a body painting stream today? No, it's an astral body. <laughs> We're painting an astral body. I'm really not dressed for body painting. <laughs> I'm really not appropriately dressed for body painting at all right now. Oh. Isn't the body paints toxic for the body? I have no idea. I've never even touched body paint. I have no idea. I would imagine some of them are. Maybe some of them are not. Being dressed at all seems inappropriate for body painting. <laughs> makes me hmm. I wonder if somebody almost makes me wonder if someone's gonna eventually do like a satire body painting stream where they're like fully clothed maybe they have a ski mask on their face too and they're just painting like the holes in between like just the whole stream like they're just sitting here decorating this part of their face <laughs> as much as possible the entire stream <laughs> that would be so funny come on because the stream would start to get really hot and the paint would melt, yeah. <laughs> you get nervous seeing me paint on the bedspread. I have got paint on it before. Red paint in specific. Water is it nasty to drink? Water is the most refreshing substance ever. You chug water. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why I remember recommend you to look into it and maybe take a drink. Aw, that sounds good. And they wear mitts instead of gloves. Mm, yeah. <laughs> says I was painted brown-faced when I played a griffin in Alice in Wonderland in school. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Red would be the worst. Mm. No, brown would be the worst.
boy brown was the worst. <laughs> Could be, yeah. <sighs> I am adding some purple, but I'm not sure if you guys can tell. I'll move it a bit closer for a minute. I'm going to add more purple in through here, too. Pumperl? Pumperl? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Keep going. can see how full and rich it is. Mm -mm. Good, yeah. Mm. Maybe we'll bring the jaw down a little bit. Painting is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I hope you're doing well today. The shoulder's not quite right, but that's all right. We're gonna let it alone. We're gonna leave it just how it is.
Hi, Laura. Hi, sweetie. Glad to see you. How are you feeling today? Hope you're doing good. You wonder if the monkey on the CD gets royalties? <laughs> I doubt it. Or the birds, or the frogs. At that point, you'd have to hunt down everything. The waterfall? I'm sure the, if it's at a park, I'm sure the park would get something. <laughs> Let's thank them now, yeah. Thank you for sharing your beautiful sounds with us that we can listen to now whenever we want. <laughs> I'm trying to decide where the angel's gonna go. We might switch to our other painting for a minute while that dries. I feel we might switch to this one for a minute. You're eating noodles with chicken and chili? Ooh, that sounds pretty good. So it must be dinner time. It's dinner time for you. <laughs> the CD is so heavy, you think? There's like a grounding, yeah. It is with its lower tones. It's good, but too sweet. Is it too sweet? You're making spaghetti bowl. Is it bolognese? 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 It made you think of a siren, did it? Grounding is a super good word for it. Yeah, once I tuned in, I was like, this is very grounding. <laughs> I was like, what is Anna talking about? Oh, no, there it is. <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah. It's what you it, it's what you said. What did I, I said two different things. <laughs> Bolne Bolognese? Like whatever this is is a soundtrack to something that's kind of a big deal. Life is kind of a big deal. <laughs> and not a big deal at the same time. I do want to add a bright yellow orange to the painting today. So like the light flames, I want to bring into the center of our orange flame creature. Just a little bit, just to brighten up a little bit of this area here. maybe even some white later. 
But this painting's pretty close. I feel like this painting's finally almost done. <clears throat> but I do want to see what we can do first before putting any white in. I say I've never tried DMT. Nope. <laughs> nope, I haven't. No. I don't need to. <laughs> Clearly, I don't need to to do my thing. It's a happy meal? Oh, it's tiramisu. So I'm eating tiramisu. Right at the moment. As my breakfast slash lunch. This is almost like a light yellow orange. So I'll have to figure out a really good way to mix this. Tiramisu's your favorite? Mm hmm <laughs> Cake for breakfast, yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. All of your work has such passion. Thank you, Kate. Hmm. This one, I started this one and if you watched me paint it in the beginning, I was actually quite confused while painting this one. I had no clue what was trying to come through. <laughs> it's like so lost. I was like, I don't get this painting at all. I really don't get this one. And then, so we, I even said, I, f I feel like I don't know where else I'm going with this. So I'm just going to take a break from this painting. And I feel like now after, life has kind of settled back down again. Um, I have a new con- like, concept? Reference. New references. Where this painting actually kind of makes sense now. It's very tower energy. Yeah, so that's what I was talking about while I was making it, that this feels like tower energy, but I don't understand where it's going, like, I don't, I don't know what to do with this painting, like, so I quit painting it, and then shortly after that, like, oh my god, life happened, and I went through, like, a lot of crazy changes. This was right before everything started changing. Those of you who were around when this painting first came around, when things, when my intuition really skyrocketed, and then we did more card readings than paintings, and then we moved, we broke up with our boyfriend, and then we moved, and then we had our cat, and then we had to like kind of resettle into where we were going and what we're doing. Like this painting just now starts coming back around. <laughs> Hmm. Amazing to follow your instincts and create, and how kind of you to share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things that I knew were coming that I didn't even comprehend at the time. Like I don't understand why this is coming through. Like this, does, this painting actually makes no sense to me. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. 
and now that things have kind of settled, I pulled it back out and I'm like, okay, I know what to do with you now. Yeah, so Miss Umbra says, it seems more like your current style of painting, and back then it was really different than all of the other paintings you did at the time, which were more nature-based instead of energy. Yes, this was one of the first energy paintings. For sure. I agree. Miss Umbra, yeah. I agree. I agree. And what an energy to pick. Complete and total chaos. What an energy to pick. <laughs> I guess you were on the same page. It's just conveyed really well, Anna. If you can pick up on the energy like that, it means it's being conveyed really well. You really want to try it again? I think you should. Did you learn a new word? You can share your new word. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm just making a really light yellow orange to kind of match our other flames. And I'm just going to go in and do some highlights. Pumpkin is your new word? Ah. <laughs> to switch our music. It's already that time. Switch our music around. We want more nature, maybe? much more nature music though. I keep almost I keep almost putting my paintbrush in my coffee. I've done it almost like five times now. <laughs> The word you just said conveyed it. I'm glad. <laughs> you appreciate the vote of confidence? Yeah. Mm -hmm. By birds, by waterfall. That's why I take so long to message. Oh, because your first language is Spanish. Hey, that's okay, Anley. It's all right. No big deal. I get it. I don't know any other language except for English. And I know a tiny bit of German. I used to know a lot of German, but I never used it, so it's kind of like, <clears throat> gone. <laughs> I used to know, I used to be pretty conversational in German. Um, 
Then the other thing I know a tiny bit of is Japanese. So that's why, I, I mean, I only know English. <laughs> or I'd be more for people speaking whatever they want. But having only known English, it makes it hard for me to do that. <laughs> You're forever putting brushes in your drink or nearly drinking my paint water when I paint. Yeah, Miss Umbra, that's my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happens. Mm. this one. I think Earth Spirit has some nature in it too. <laughs> you know English, Italian, and you're learning French, Ely? Aww. fun to learn more languages. I wanted to learn Arabic for a long time. When I was at the hospital, um, we had a large uh, Arabic community. And so when I was working there, I was like, it'd be really nice to be able to learn a bit of Arabic. Because that was one that I always wanted to learn something unique. <laughs> like, most people probably wouldn't expect that, you know? Mm. Same thing with, like, Japanese. People might expect German, but I doubt they would expect Japanese or Arabic. So I always want to pick something really different. I tried Spanish, but... I, did, I quit doing Spanish because... I couldn't roll my R's. <laughs> and I wanted... So I did German instead. I just enjoyed German more. No function functional fun what? Ian Lee? <laughs> it's not functionable, maybe. <laughs> or maybe that's not a problem if I can't roll my R's. It didn't work. <laughs> it's okay. Spanish is easy, but I just have a bad memory, so no time for more languages. Mm. That sounded more Italian. <laughs> of course it did. <laughs> Miss Umber says there's a lot of people that don't realize there's a lot of Arabic-speaking people in Michigan. It's kind of random. Yeah, there is. Yeah. There is, actually. I should learn something like Kleong or Elvish. <laughs> I, that was really narrowing it down to a specific group of people. <laughs> oh. That would be something to see. Mm, kind of would, wouldn't it? Yeah, if you're gonna go for unexpected, I guess, go for that, too. A lot of Ukraine. Yeah, actually, I would agree, Miss Umbra, yeah.
Pakta? What's Pakta? helps a lot. That little bit of orange in the center really helps a lot. It's a pact. Oh, interesting. It sounds like pact. So the A at the end is silent. to know some Cleon phrases from watching the Star Trek Voyager. <laughs> I do like Star Trek. I uh, Do we even want to go there right now? No. It's like apples and oranges. Honestly, Star Wars versus Star Trek is like apples to oranges. You can't really compare them. The lower deck is awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who said TV can't be educational? People who weren't paying attention. <laughs> Anna agrees. They're totally different. Totally different. With the hairstyle more looking like a fan of Star Wars, you think? <laughs> TV can totally be educational. So I kind of lightened up the center a bit more so it stands out a bit. A bit better? I do want to pull out a little bit more of the blue. So I'm gonna add a little bit of hmm, yellow to our light blue. white to make this pop. Because I really want some of this blue to stand out and come forward because it's hiding in the background a little too much.
So I made like a little teal color that I'm gonna put some white into. Just to brighten it up. It makes it look a bit fragile, does it? But also stiff. The sharp lines bring the stiffness and rigidity. Rigidness? Rigidity? <laughs> that was an awful word. <laughs> rigidity. That's what I meant to say. in the wave of the orange brings some of the softness you're gonna eat your spaghetti and watch star trek bye now bye creed for now bye dear live long and prosper Turgid? Mm, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, and the swirls are back here. The drippy part, mm, it's like they're melting. It's like they're melting. Of it's really vivid, yeah, it is. It's got a lot to say. <laughs> you wish you could do the same, but you have to be at work. You wish you could eat some spaghetti and watch Star Trek. <laughs> bye, C's, and yeah, bye, Creed. Mm hmm. So I'm going to go in with my light blue and really make some of these sections here stand out a lot more than they are. They're falling into the background too much. You just want to bring them forward a little bit. I do think we'll eventually go in and add some white to that because it needs to come forward just a little bit more than what it is.
almost there. same color to the rest of the painting so it doesn't look like it doesn't belong. <laughs> hey spiritual answers. <laughs> Welcome in dear. You're not usually here at this time. Mm. It's Wednesday. <laughs> we paint during the day usually. So this is when you can see me painting in action. We usually chat and paint on Wednesdays. Nice color mood. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. I am doing well with spiritual answers. Thank you. I'll show you the painting close up. feeling, doesn't it? Like, it almost looks like a fight, doesn't it? Doesn't it almost look like they're gonna break out into a fight? Like, mmm. Like, battle of the wills. <laughs> Who's gonna win? That's what it looks like to me, anyway. Philly says, no. They're saying, hey friend, nice to see ya. <laughs> Aw, <laughs> that's true. Hmm. Op oppositions. Coming together. Regardless of the chaos it might create, <laughs> simply to just appreciate each other. I like that too, Philly. Hmm. I like that too. It can be definitely be interpreted many ways by anybody who looks at it. <laughs> That's kind of how this art works. Do like Philly's way of seeing it as non confrontational. Of 
friends after chaos. <laughs> yeah, Billy, I like that. I do like that. I think you're going somewhere, yeah. something to that. You do like it too, Anna? I do. It's very fitting. It's not a very hot tank. The tower isn't bad, the energy isn't bad. That's just my hot tank. Yeah, no, I don't think the tower is bad either. It can be bad if you don't want to let the tower crumble, though. If you want to be in so much control of the tower not crumbling, then yes, it can be very bad. But it's you creating your own pain by not wanting to just flow. Maybe that's why the flame feels so gentle. Because the flame feels gentle like it's slowly and softly coming closer but the ri the rigidness kind of feels like a kind of energy no but also still open and some parts of it are soft like in the background you can see the soft waves so it's not completely soft on and soft. Hmm. I really do enjoy the I really do enjoy the tower card exactly. Yeah. 
or it could be somewhere in between with some percents. Maybe it's not conflicting or embracing entities. It could be different aspects of our own nature within ourselves. That's true. Not necessarily good or bad. I think we all have. Uh, character traits. We occasionally wonder about how we can have conflicting aspects in ourselves. Mm -hmm. It does make sense. Like how I can be a very introverted person who doesn't really like to socialize, but also I'm very talkative and have a tendency to overshare or talk too much. I'll cook my life, Miss Umbra. <laughs> Ask your sister about that. The first time I went to your house, your mom told Sam she never saw Sam so quiet because I wouldn't stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could see that too. transform into flames of the phoenix mm -hmm. when I see the tower card I think I can't wait to release this I think a little bit of me goes here we go <laughs> but yeah <laughs> Ian Lee likes to think there's a lot of balance for how much is going on in the painting mm-hmm This one does have runes in it already. <laughs> that I forgot about. I'm gonna go to the table stream just for a minute. We're kind of talking about the story of the painting right now. There's three runes we painted forever ago. We drew the runes and then painted them on. Forever ago, before the painting was even half done, we put runes in it. This is one that's in there. It's the rune of cattle. Rune of material gain usually indicates prosperity coming into your life in some form. It's the rune of fulfillment. Something which you have been striving toward will finally be within your grasp. It signifies overcoming opposition. And then the second one is the one we drew last night, Manas. It's the other one that's in the painting. Can draw one for you, Miss Umbra. And this one is the rune of humankind, philanthropy, interdependence. You can respect, expect to receive some sort of aid or cooperation. It can indicate a need to st step back, and becoming too caught up in your problem to be effective at solving it. It could be time to seek some good advice. May signal, this room may signal a time when you need to speak. Take special care to remain modest. Now may not be the time to take credit for any accomplishments. Examine your situations and look at the rooms to be more aware. Also indicates magical abilities. This one is the final rune in the painting. And this is kind of very fitting. All the runes are fitting, honestly, with what you guys are talking about. How we feel about what the painting's trying to say. So this rune, I think it's Dea, Degas? But this book says Day. It's a symbolic of increased growth, increased prosperity, 
shows that you possess the inner strength to turn your situation around. If you would only utilize your own strength. This points out to an eventual victory over any obstacles. This symbol, this rune talks about growth. Growth that is slow and steady. Therefore, as changes are happening, you may not notice your growth, but one day you will wake up and things will look much brighter. This rune also has to do with your attitude. It suggests continuing to put on a good face, no matter what the present problems are. Sometimes drawing this room will mark a major change in your life. Wow, that, that's accurate. <laughs> Something perhaps so radical that you will never live your life in the same way again. This usually deals with making a new start on some level but sometimes it shows that you must make the best of a situation in which you have no control of. Things will get better. This rune is amplified, especially when Manaz is nearby, which we did draw Manaz. So it's even more powerful can also show being trying to show you that you're being exposed to a new way of life and a new way of thinking or even a religious type of enlightenment so it's very fitting before we even freaking got halfway done in the painting come on man come on man Kind of feels like ohm. Hmm. Like feeling that you and your neighbor are the same. To love yourself, you need to love your neighbor and vice versa. Hmm. I guess it could, yeah. Since you got your room book out, yeah, I'm gonna draw one for you. Miss Sombra. <laughs> what do you want to have you focused on an area of life, Miss Umbra? And then we'll read it. So today I'm going to be reading the crystal messages straight out of the book. You don't need a question necessarily, but it can help. It can. It always helps if you have a question, but you can keep that question to yourself with the direct reads from like the runes in the books you can keep the question to yourself so it's a little bit more private i don't need to know i just trust that the right message will come through for you as long as you know what you're asking then you're good if i have to do a fully intuitive read i need to know your question because i have to translate energy in the context of your question and that can be extremely hard if i don't know what you're asking so it, it saves me some time and a lot of energy for, with questions but for these kind of things today you don't need a question like right now miss umber's just like energy for the month that's enough information so let's focus for miss umbra You are, but you won't. It's kind of snarky. This rune's kind of snarky. It's blank. <laughs> it's blank. <laughs> it's the destiny rune. that even in there. It's the rune of destiny. 
the rune of mystery is the rune trying to tell you, have you set your intentions, Miss Umbra? For what the month is gonna have? That's kind of what the rune is saying. Like, mm, it's a mystery to us, because it's a mystery to you. We can't help you manifest if you're not sure what you want to manifest. <laughs> That's why I said it's a little snarky. Let's see if the blank one is actually... Yeah, here we go. So it's called Weird. It's a modern room. This rune is one of total trust and should be taken as exciting evidence of your most immediate contact with your own true destiny. This is talking about the cosmic powers of faith. It's closely tied to the word of karma and the concept of karma. That we ourselves must, res must accept responsibility for our own actions be those actions good or bad. When this rune appears, you may be certain that something unexpected is going to come to you. Whether that something is positive or negative depends on your wear, wear it of virtue by your past behaviors. Its meaning can best be interpreted by any neighboring runes, which we are only drawing one right now. can often indicate that the matter in question is in the lap of the gods. It's mostly about a void. When you see the blank face, you kind of envision it as being a hole, a gateway to another dimension, which is both everything and nothing. Again, intention. Through this rune, the voices of the gods will invariably be made manifest. Very often their voices are communicating to you through your inner ear. This shows that which is destined to be and cannot be avoided. Since this rune is so ambiguous, it can easily mean a good occurrence as well as a bad one. about pairing it with other runes. So I feel like you have built up energy and karma, Miss Umbra, that's ready to be used for your manifestation purposes, but you haven't put any intentions out yet. So... It's almost like a waiting period. If that makes sense. Which is maybe why you're like, hmm, things have been settled for a while. What's next? What's coming next? What's... It should be about time for things to start rolling again. Right? Things have been settled for a while. And being one who understands that things never stay the same, when we start asking and feeling like something's on its way. Oftentimes, something is on its way. And at the same time, sometimes that energy of momentum is our own energy saying, okay, let's create something now. Let's put an intention out there. <laughs> so it's a mystery. Definitely a 
mystery. You can see that, Miss Sumbra, now that life is more settled. Someone close to me is having a hard time, I think. I will use what I've learned to help them. That could be the change or karma being referred to. So this is karma that, either good or positive karma, that you have built for yourself. That is waiting to be used in a way that you see fit. Do I know if there's anything for a weight loss, like meditation or ritual? I think meditation is good for multiple things. Because one of the main reasons why we gain weight has to do with stress, right? I think everybody understands that. That stress makes us, makes our weight, some of us lose weight, some of us gain it. But stress is very much correlated to our weight. It's one of the factors. So I do think meditation on its own can help you manage your own emotional stress better to where that doesn't become a factor anymore. Or as, a, as powerful of a factor that it might once have been. So anything specific? No. But at the same time, I think naturally doing meditation and getting yourself in more in control of your emotional stressors naturally already helps. But it's not going to be, it's not like a, I would question anything that says do this meditation to lose weight. In specific, I would, hmm, I would think about that for a minute. I would at least investigate it. Hey, mouse, welcome in, dear. I hope that makes sense. eater mm, yeah a lot of people are and it just stress actually does have an effect on your body in multiple ways how's it going there we're doing really well mouse how are you doing dear mm -hmm. you can look into self-love practices to address the underlying reasons you may have trouble with your weight and how it affects your perception and happiness. That's true, Miss Umber. Thank you for offering that extra little bit. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> this, this SO, the SO silicone? Welcome in, hun. <laughs> Glad to have you. Hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to go back to our 
astral person now that he's dry. And then we'll put some white in, so he is a little more uh, light and translucent, so he fits better in the painting, because he does stand out a lot right now. <laughs> That's okay. Welcome back, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> the painting, yeah. So he's gonna become a little bit lighter, and we're gonna add more galaxy specks inside of him. fun, but it's going to be more fun. No, that's okay. I think it'll it'll dry a bit darker than that. That's gonna help quite a bit. Astro chart painting? Is that what it looks like, Phil? You appreciate the use of the violet hues, which served us off in the spectrum? Mm hmm. Yeah, it is there to make everything a bit softer. Laura says it's time for her to go. Bye, Laura. Thanks for hanging out so long, dear. I know it's probably pretty late for you. <laughs> You're gonna fall asleep watching kitties on TV? Aw, good night. <laughs> for weight loss, the turpentine 
Terpen... Terpene? Humanelli? Interesting, right? Can surely be helpful to suppress appetite. I'm not sure what that is. But thanks for sharing, Red. <laughs> Are my eyes blue? They're kind of like a blue-gray, but they, they look darker on stream. someone's future in the painting you're asking if I was <laughs> maybe I don't think so though it's just energy right now it's interpretive as it's meant to be <laughs> it's found in hops sage ginger and some other things Hmm, is it red? So it's a compound. Hmm. Nano says you look cute. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You'll take a look. Hmm. Yeah, I'd be interested too. go in and make the top half a bit lighter now. Again, we're making it blend together better. And then we can go in and do some darker shadows. And really put some popping um, like shadows for our, our galaxy feel. <laughs> you see how the painting has progressed since this afternoon. So we're working on this one, and then we have a second one. We're kind of popping between the two. of that one time <laughs> I tried edibles that's how I was seeing colors everywhere and shapes is that true Ian Lee mm. I've never done anything like that <laughs> this is just me unfiltered you don't know if it's possible to paint someone's astrology foresight I think of things like that to be silly. Hmm. I don't think that's what we're doing today. The blue part is like a head. It is, yeah. That we're getting ready to push back a little bit further.
it's helping. It was your first time eating Leah and never again. <laughs> Meow says edibles are dope. Mm. I've never tried it. I will complete what I'm able to do without it. So I just don't see a need. The blue part is like Lord Shiva. You think so, Meows? Hmm. 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 I could maybe see that, especially with the ribbons coming around the center. That's interesting. The red orange is like a tailor body. Oh. oh, that's right, you did say earlier. Om Namah Shiva. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing artwork, by the way. Amazing gallery. Thank you, Mouse. <laughs> mm -hmm. I could see the orange maybe looking like a bunny. Hmm. It's actually ribbons. Cool. <laughs> you meant the other painting. Oh, our second one. They're both. They both kind of look like bodies. <laughs> painting reminds me of my thoughts drifting to the next. Epilepsy does that, does it, Philly? Hmm. You're talking about this one? Mind blown. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I see one being not two. Do you? That's really interesting, Matthew. Hmm. So this looks like a tail to you? One being not two. That's super interesting to me. The blue is the head, and the orange is the tailor body. Interesting. You're not ready yet for a forecast. That's okay, Philly. Never before you're ready. <laughs> blue definitely represents <laughs> she like. <laughs> yeah does kind of look like it. They have a sim similar spreading. Like branching. Like a fractal kind of feel. You got a star, Ian Lee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course you did. What else do we want to listen to today? We've We've actually done lots of nature today. Hmm. Did I take color and design, Philly? No. I went to... I never really went to school for painting. Uh, I took art classes all senior year in high school. <laughs> it's almost like a rich <laughs> ambient medieval modal music. I have Celtic music. Would that work? I do have some Celtic. You know what we haven't listened to in a while? We haven't listened to... Celtic River.
So we also have this Celtic Dreams. So maybe we'll do Celtic Dreams. <laughs> that's as close as what you're... That's the closest thing I can think of, Matthew, for what you're suggesting. That I know I have. <laughs> You seem to know your major, extended, middle, minor, and minor hues. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I took art in high school. And I did a little bit of introduction to drawing in college, but I haven't actually like gone like to study, study. <laughs> you know, I didn't finish, so. I think I took one introduction class, two drawing classes, and then I was done. I was like, mm, this is, college is not for me. It's too expensive. So I actually did not finish. Not necessary. That's kind of how it felt for me. I could see other people really needing to go and get something out of it, but not for me. <laughs> Not for me. I just wanted to get started and learn as I go. Yeah, I don't really have any medieval... Wow. I don't really have any super medieval folksy stuff. This would be about as close as we get. You didn't finish university the first time you tried either, Matthew. Mm, yeah. I did not. <laughs> I did not. Nope, nope. You're finishing your master's degree, Spirits and Answers? Are you? What are you going for? If you want to share. I mean, you don't have to, but... <laughs> you dropped out after a semester and a half. I... I went for a few years. And it honestly became too expensive. Like, they wouldn't give me any more... Money? To continue? Like, I had maxed out all my loans to go and I wasn't I wasn't old enough to they said I wasn't old enough I needed someone to co-sign more loans for me to continue going and I didn't have anybody to do that so I was like if they won't let me do this myself it's just I can't, it's not worth it it's not worth it like, I literally could- I had to quit going. It was stupid. It was stupid. I might be a little bitter. <laughs> I might be a little bitter. I'm like, you know how much you, school, and financial aid people, know how much school is going to cost me. 
when did you think that I was ever going to have somebody cosign? I had been telling you since the beginning that this was all me. So you tell me how it's okay to have a student go that long and then the semester before they have to sign up for new loans, you tell them they can't continue. That's bullcrap. Is bullcrap. Sorry, I'm a little bitter. <laughs> it's a bunch of crap. Yeah, so Matthew, you were able to stop and kind of reevaluate, which is good for you. There's a course in apologizing? I'm sure there probably is. <laughs> The other is Oxford Online. I'm taking philosophy of mind. Wow, that's interesting. Dang. Defending beliefs and ideas. Mm. So I am going in and adding like this little drippy energy on the side here. That's what I'm spending my time doing. Hey Red, welcome to the treehouse. Red spider, welcome in. You have some bitter bitterness with your university experiences too. Mm. Yeah, I do, Matthew. It's still there. <laughs> Maybe that needs healed. Uh, it is healed, cause I'm. It's unfair, is what it is. It's recognizing how unfair that is, and knowing that that needs to change. But not, not holding regret that, like, I did anything wrong. Like, I don't hold blame to me. No. It looks like a flower. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it has to do with how to form valid arguments. That's good spiritual answers. Is... Some universities have courses in memeology. Are you kidding me, Skull Kid? <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't be surprised. Whatever will bring people in, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Ian Lee wants to start a baby photography, as well as continuing with. in the stock market. Hmm, that could work out well for you, Ian Lee. 
You want a master's degree, Matthew, but you don't want to go back to the university environment. I used to talk about um, going back to the way things used to be, having, being like a, an actual like internship. Apprentice, being like an apprentice. It's gonna be really cool. And this drippy, lifting kind of aura? She's being like lifted up and off actually came to me in a meditation so just so you guys know where stuff's coming from underwater basket weaving. I think I have heard of this, Matthew. <laughs> I get it. It's what you receive is what you project. Mm -hmm. Right, Philly? Yeah. Have I played Among Us? No, I haven't. <laughs> what is it? What is this? <sighs> as one person put it, being an artist is a condition, not an occupation. Yes. <laughs> I would agree. For sure. <laughs> yeah. It is who I am. And how I am.
what nice bagpipes. Wow. <laughs> hmm. Art is not a competition. I agree, Philly. It's really not. It's a competition against ourselves. It's... It can be a competition against ourselves if we feel like we must control and perform and do it can be it can be a competition against ourselves when we really just want to enjoy the process and create hi timidly witchy welcome back thank you for your subscription dear welcome back that's what i mean techno what really wants to come through is just the expression and the joy but sometimes we get really particular about what that looks like. And it can be a competition between our mental expectation and what we simply just allow to happen. Thank you for your subscription, dear. That was very sweet of you. I appreciate that very much. We can create what we want to do our best and maybe make it forever than the previous artwork. Yeah, you're always expanding. Artists can be some of the most vicious competitors against each other you will ever see. I think that's everywhere, though. Spiritual answers. Same way with, like, anything that people get really passionate about, I feel. Techno did graffiti. Mm -hmm. Do the biggest, do the boldest, and doing the most. That's true. To get recognized by your fellow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It can be. I have more fun when I don't look at it that way, though. I'm just here to do my own work. Hopefully inspire other people to do theirs. Have fun with it. If I get better at executing things, great. If I don't, oh well. But I think you're always going to naturally get better the more you do. Right? Practice. Practice, practice, practice.
you know what? <laughs> he looks pretty cool right now. I'll do your own Ian Lee. You think people have an idealized concept of the arts community? That's true. And I might honestly have, gosh, I might have an idealized version of my way being the best way. I think we all do that though. I think we all do that. Maybe my ideal is too a little idealistic, right? Oh man, who cares if you don't do it perfect? Just go with the flow, do your thing, enjoy what you're doing. No competition, arms open. Like, I understand that could be very idealistic, but gosh darn it, I'm way happier doing that. So why not do that? I am way happier and I enjoy what I do way more by doing that so why not do it what is it hurting <laughs> what is it hurting <laughs> thank you for helping us hit the sub goal guys I appreciate you all very much <laughs> your five years of working in a contemporary arts museum shows you it's a bitterly competitive community like any other business? Yeah. 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 I've tried to apply <laughs> to have my stuff in galleries. <laughs> it's a little... They're not... I don't know. I might be too out there. They're like, mm, I mean, it's okay. But I don't really, mm, I don't know if I really get it. Which is why if, when it's open community entries is when I usually do it. Because I'm like, mm, they're not really critiqued beforehand. I don't have to pay. <laughs> and I don't have to pay somebody to critique my work and then go, mm, maybe not for us. <laughs> mm. Crete says I'm well practiced at being a jerk mm -mm. and at overcoming such. Practice makes close to perfect, whatever that meaning might mean to you. That's true, Ian Lee, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to money, people can get often awful. Mm. Ian Lee says it's really hard being an artist. It can be. Again, if you hold expectations, I could say I'm not a good artist because I'm not in a gallery. I could say that if I wanted to. <laughs> well, my artwork only makes it into a gallery when it's like not critiqued first. Mm. What a terrible artist. Not even in an art gallery. I could say that. But I don't. I just tell myself it's unrecognized. And that's okay. Because those of you who are here, welcome, Bob Ross, dear. Those of you who are here get to experience that. So it might not be in a typical venue but it is still being displayed and it's even even a little more so being displayed because you guys gonna see the process how often are you gonna be able to closely watch something like this you know what I mean you'll send the painting on discord mm. Have I considered taking my art to consciousness expos? I have. I actually was, bef right before the lockdown, I was looking into more of that kind of avenue, yeah. But I hadn't, find any, I hadn't found anything local 
to start with. You think galleries can be a little pretentious? Mm. They have to, you have to, you know, let's be honest, we can't be rude to the galleries. They have to try and pick things that they think a large, vast number of people will appreciate, right? Otherwise, they might lose support. So I get it, right? It's built a certain way for comfort and sustainability. I get that. Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati. All C's. CCC. <laughs> That's true. Tim and Leah. Doing her best art and accept it for what it is. Mm-hmm. Yep. You think I'll, I'll get some interest there? I know that I would for sure, yeah. Vanko died before he was ever recognized. That's all right. <laughs> I'm recognized by myself. <laughs> you love Luna's hair. Thank you, Bob Ross. How are you doing, huh? As long as you truly enjoy what you're doing and it brings you happiness, I support that. That goes for everyone. Exactly what they want. I agree with you. Yes. So we are going to go back in and make our little droopy halos a bit brighter and extend them a bit further.
looks way better now. Look how much, look how much more energetic that just got. <laughs> You're doing great. You're going here for a little artistic motivation. Do you want to see our piece closer? I'm putting like this drippy halo. <laughs> and we'll put we'll make this we'll make this side a bit brighter too. <laughs> you like the sparks of light? Yeah, so that actually, the drippiness came through the meditation and the sparks of light in the background are kind of like, uh, I guess, shooting stars. They have a little bit of mo movement. wants to drip really far down the canvas, I'm gonna let it. Pretty stinking cool. A Catherine wheel? What's a Catherine wheel? <laughs> What's a Catherine wheel?
leave it upside down for a minute. Mm -hmm. Broken ones? What? Sorry, hold on. Sorry, they're talking about making broken lines. <laughs> hey, Vivi, welcome back, huh? A Catherine wheel is a firework that spins around. In England, anyway. It's also called a pinwheel. Oh, really? Thank you, Vivi. <laughs> so it's like, oh, it's like the ones that... Mm, So we're extending some of our drippiness, broken lines, at the top. Very, very interesting concept here. <laughs> I like it. I'm gonna try to do it in odd patterns. Like I don't wanna do everything the same constantly. really neat.
that was not, this painting is not anything like I imagined it would be. <laughs> it's always interesting to see what happens. Hmm. I like this music. This music is very fitting for the uh, <laughs> painting right now. excited to see people uh, pop in and check on their painting especially when they haven't been around in a minute <laughs> I'm always like mm, I can't wait to show them what we did <laughs> you have to run hugs hopefully you'll be around this evening if not have a great day thank you spiritual answers we're gonna be live maybe for an hour or so more I feel maybe So maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this though. Every now and then when I get a new concept moving along in a painting, I get really focused and I'm like, okay, now's game time. We're off. We can really start to get a lot of things done. The music is done. And like that, the music is done. Maybe we have something else we'd rather listen to. always fun to see how things are going to work. <laughs> Would planets be too much right now? The CD? I don't think so. I don't think it would be too much. No. Hmm. It would actually be fitting, I feel. Again, with our painting. <laughs> I feel like it could be fitting. I'd probably turn it down just a tiny bit because it does get kind of loud. So I'll turn it down maybe before we go. Hmm. 
Mars gets pretty loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it does, you know. Do I ever predict things based on astrology? I don't really pay attention to astrology. I just, honestly, I don't. <laughs> I don't pay any attention to astrology. I'll watch other astrologists sometimes. Like on YouTube and things like that. But me, myself, that's not a tool that I utilize, no. Mm -mm. Not for me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Just to be totally honest, I don't. Just going in and making some interesting strokes in some of our I guess transition layers. You discovered Wagner's the entry of the gods into Valhalla, Matthew? a few weeks ago and that piece is amazing is it a musical piece you just dropped something in did you boss ah oh, i'll have to check it out discovered it where hiding in a cave <laughs> maybe youtube maybe somebody shared it Very interesting. You think it was from my opera? Really? But it's instrumental. I do like instrumental music a lot. Hi, Meta Lunar. Welcome back. 
I'm glad to see you. How have you been? Mm, it kind of reminded me of the planets in a way. We're listening to the planets, um, CD? soundtrack from the BBC TV show. This was a gift from from Greed. Mm. Mm. Oh, interesting. Wow, this is getting more complicated. I need a mandala. I need a, I just got another idea. I need a mandala. Which is actually in one of my boxes. <laughs> I'm gonna dig for a mandala though. I'm gonna put a mandala in the chest. be really really cool green green it's gonna glow green interesting sorry <laughs> i'm having like a mini conversation with myself are in the basement are we gonna be okay if I go on like a five minute break <laughs> make myself something else to eat besides tiramisu for the day grab my mandala mm. and come back we may survive, but no guarantees. It'll only take like five minutes. <laughs> Just so I can go grab it. I'll be back. Five minutes. Five minute break. I'll be back.
Just kidding, not that long. These sounds are making you have to pee. The fountain, it's a really powerful fountain. <laughs> What newspaper does the Joker read to keep up on his fellow villains? The New York Crimes. I thought he was in Gotham. <laughs> I thought he was in Gotham, wouldn't it be? I'm, you know what I mean. I'm just being frustrating. <laughs> mm. The loon in me wants to say. When did the Joker make it to New York? <laughs> Unless he's jumping. Mm, he's checking on his in another universe. No one in New York reads the New York Times either. <laughs> How would you know, Creed? How would you know? How would you know? put a mandala on the chest. This one's, I like this one, but this might be too much. I don't really want to do a flower. A flower on top of a flower? Actually, that might look okay. Like right here. That might actually look pretty cool. That one's a maybe. Too sharp. A bullseye? <laughs> This one could be okay, too. With an open center. That one's too sharp, too. With its little pointy edges. I don't want anything pointy. This one's too much, too. So do we want to go with the flower? Or do we want to go with the blank center? I like this one, I think. More. But the flower pattern could be nice too. I like- uh, I'm almost going for this one. Because when you only see half of this, it has like a lotus feel. Which I like better. I like the lotus feel better. So this is gonna be green. Why in town? 
intense music. <laughs> what intense music? Always forget how much this kind of goes. <sighs> We might have to paint white first and then go back with this green just to make it brighter. But I just want to get it down first to have a better idea. But I already think that might be what we have to do. Again, sometimes it's just experimentation. <laughs> sometimes you're just trying it and seeing what happens and then Reevaluating as you go. Hmm, does this work in my favor? Does this not work in my favor? What do I like about what I've done? What don't I like about it? Can I make changes? All that kind of stuff. Right now we're just going to get the color down and we can reevaluate once we're done. So the green did show up a bit, but I do want it to be brighter than what it is. So I probably will go over with white, just so we can go back with the green. And really make it like pop out way more than I want it to. Am I streaming tarot another day? Yeah, probably tomorrow night. Yeah, Wednesdays are just our chill and hangout days. Hi, Purple Moon. I'm sorry you're not uh, feeling good, dear. And hi, Diva. Yeah, I have a headache and just general lack of energy. <laughs> so, but I have enough to do our painting today. Hey anime. King on 30 frames per second. Welcome to the treehouse. <laughs> Hi Fable. Hi dear, welcome back. Mm. can and what self-care they can today. Yeah, I've been, I've been pretty exhausted for a while. Especially with the moon. Yeah. 
lot of emotions or not sure how to deal with it? Have you tried to meditate and just breathe through it? Purple moon? Have you just tried to breathe through it? It sounds stupid, but I swear it works. It's not. It almost seems too easy <laughs> to do. You know? Because you can't really rush with something like that. You felt better than your mood changed again? Hmm. Did you do grounding? Did you put up a bubble shield? For your own energy so you're not absorbing other people? practice with life is about bringing the same calm that meditation brings us learning how to practice it actively like in active life much better. Much better. I like it. <laughs> Sometimes we get really good at meditation, but we don't know how to bring the practice and feeling that meditation brings us into an active life. It becomes tricky. So I was asking if you grounded or if maybe for you, it's finally time to learn how to bring that consistency into your life, regardless of outside resources or influences. It's about being able to bring that actively into a life in motion. Yeah, so did you hear me ask Purple Moon? Maybe your mom walked in when I said this. I asked if you had grounded yourself and made a bubble shield to not absorb as much of other people's garbage.
you always shield every morning. I don't think fire energy has necessarily has to be a negative thing. Purple moon. That's a natural way of life. So what self-care are you doing, Purple Moon, to make these transitions easier for you? So when we get irritable, it's because some of our needs are not being met. So that's why I asked Purple Moon that what are you doing to meet your own needs? What kind of self-care are you doing? Because if you are taking good care of yourself, you wouldn't get as angry and more maybe snappy as much because what's happening is needs have not been met for a while but you are okay with you're used to that but when things get more difficult your needs start screaming louder and if you're not familiar with listening to them and doing your self-care appropriately then yes you get very irritable because it was hard kind of already but when things become tight and we still haven't done our self-care that's when we get really irritable so that's why i asked what kind of self-care <laughs> So you said, I work out, but that's about it. You just need more self-care, hon. So ask yourself, Oh, body, how do I feel right now? What do I need right now? I need rest. Why don't I just give myself some rest? Simple as that your energy becomes more sporadic the less you give yourself what you need. Oh yeah, I had another rune. Did I? Let me check. Oh yeah, Ian Lee. Do you still want your rune, Ian Lee? <laughs> I'll do D. When we're used to giving excuses for why we can't take care of ourselves or why it's silly to need to do things that we clearly need to do, that's when we get most irritable. So today, Purple Moon, I would give myself no qualms or
or irrational that's silly to whatever you need so we make ourselves feel loved when we care for our body and our energy we allow ourselves to feel love and compassion from ourselves when we start taking better care of ourselves Do you know, do you have a focus for your room? So do something s small right now. Purple moon. To give you the comfort you're looking for. Give yourself the comfort you're looking for. Yeah, I know. That's why I said don't make whatever you need feel silly or stupid or ridiculous. That is not self-care. So, Dina, let me know if you have your focus. You're feeling how you do for a reason. Mm -hmm. What area of life are you going to focus on, Dino, for your room? And you'll feel less sad, Purple Moon, if you do more self-care. Working out is not enough self-care. And the reason for working out is not reflected in self-love either. So this is about growing more self-love in you through a daily practice that is good for you. So you will feel better and more centered and less irritable once you take time to care for yourself in a way that you actually need and deserve. Right, Dino. But today, we are gearing it toward some type of area in our life. So you want work, relationships, friends. What do you, what do you want to focus the room on? We're still going to read it straight from the book. <laughs> Friends, okay. time understanding how it seems so hard and easy at the same time <laughs> self-love I would almost take a bath for however long you can manage to take a bath for. It's something that gets you unwound and unplugged and alone with yourself. Where you can feel and hear your own heartbeat in the water. Connecting solely to you. Boop. Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> All right. Friends for Dino. Mm. 
How are you doing, Dino? This is Othello. We drew it upside down, though. You already finished your Adam Sandler movie, did you? Mm. Nice. Once you take care of your body and physically get your body more relaxed, Purple Moon, you can go back and ask yourself again, what do I need right now? This is a practice that I feel you need to get familiar with, is pausing, scanning your body, and asking yourself, what do I need right now in this moment? because you have a tendency to go without go without rest go without taking a break go without doing some self-care go without <laughs> that's why you're so irritable this is about making time specifically just for you to be with you And once you start recognizing more what your needs are, Purple Moon, interruptions won't bother you. Interruptions will not bother you as much. Just realize you have an empty cup right now and you're trying to fill it and it's hard because it's taking a lot of effort to do that right now. That's the only reason why it's hard. It's because you've put it off for too long. So, start now. You will be less irritable when you practice your self-care a bit better. You won't be nearly as irritable. All that interruption, you'll already be fuller. So an interruption won't drain you as much. But when you're empty, because you haven't done enough self-care, everything annoys you because you just need to take care of you and you can't manage to do that. So, take time today for yourself. And every day, this should be an everyday practice, Purple Moon. Every day you should be doing at least something just for you. You got a migraine right now, Daniel? Yeah, I do too. It's okay, though. That's why we're just chilling today, and I'm not really plugging in to anybody. Mm. So this is a rune of possessions. Usually represents things that money can buy, like a land or a building. But when it does indicate money, it can come from inheritances, trusts, or pension funds. It, it can indicate someone who is consumed by an idea or a vision, perhaps one that's inspired by the past. It can also suggest gaining help in the matter at hand from other people who are older, or perhaps old friends. In reversed, it can talk about delays and frustration, which we did draw this one upside down. Right, this one's upside down. This can talk about being frustrated by trying to progress too quickly. 
continuing on in haste could permanently damage the outcome of a relationship or a problem at hand. So this is saying anything with your friends that you're trying to just quickly fix and move on with, this needs more attention than that. We can't rush this part, Nino. A quick fix is going to not help in the long run. It's going to create more damage. This is this room when it's in reverse is indicative of the individual standing on his or her own two feet. It can show that you may need to learn how to rely on yourself. Wow, holy crap. Do you know, even this rune is telling you <laughs> to rely on yourself. <laughs> Standing on your own two feet. So in regards to friends, this could be saying that we need to focus on ourselves right now. Any qualms or dysfunction within our friendships, there's no quick fix for that. So really give it its time to heal and resolve itself. A quick fix right now would not be beneficial. So if you're looking for something to resolve itself quickly feel reassured in the fact that it's not done yet because a quick fix would simply not heal in the way that it should so i hope that helps do you know i hope that one helps then a leader wants to ring the gong Okay, what area of life do you want to focus on for your rune? <laughs> Work? Okay. I'm gonna really roll it up, roll the runes up for a minute. They're showing me self-care things I can do. Yeah, that's really all it is, hon. You're not doing anything wrong except for not giving yourself enough attention. So don't beat yourself up. Just be more attentive to yourself. That's the only thing you're doing wrong. Okay? the gong serve a more specific purpose or just a soothing sound? It's just a soothing sound. <laughs> Alright. Skull Kid is focusing on work. Maybe for other people. I'm sure the gong has a very ancient purpose. Hey, official Kristen. Welcome to the treehouse, huh? Thank you for your host. We're taking a break from painting to draw some runes. Glad to have you, though. This was the one that is actually in, oh yeah, Fehu. It's the one I just drew for you. But I am sure a gong has a very specific purpose, right? It's a very ancient tool. But here in the treehouse, it's just the sound. I haven't given it anything in particular, a particular purpose. 
you know. Mm -hmm. So, this ring in specific. You love it so much. Thank you. <laughs> it means cattle. So this talks about material gain. Usually indicates a period of prosperity coming to you. It's a rune of fulfillment. Something which you have striving toward will finally be within your grasp. It signifies overcoming opposition, whether personal, it's like someone maybe trying to thwart your plans, or impersonal, such as a bad situation or time frame. When this rune is upright, it suggests that you have what it takes to win over any opposing forces through your diligence and hard work. It can also indicate a fortunate new career opportunity or a fortunate financial investment. Are you wondering if you should do the same work or move into a new work? Skull kid. We're doing really well, Kristen. We're doing so good. I've been working on an astral body painting behind us here. It's upside down. It's upside down, but I'll flip it over. But that's what we were working on until we decided to draw some runes really quick. <laughs> I'm asking because this rune says, if you're wondering if you should move, move from one project to another or one work to another, um, no matter how difficult things may seem at present, one should not give up while there is still even the remotest chance of success. You may be experiencing bad times now, but the dawn always follows right after the darkness. This does say, continue on with your current task. So if you've been wondering about switching jobs, I would say no, because this rune is saying stick with your current process. The bad times that you might be dealing with in this process are coming to an end. So. So I hope that helps. Skull kid. Looks like you're in a good spot though. Lots of gain. Lots of game. Keep at it. You're gonna keep it short, Kristen. Hey, that's alright. You came out as transgender a month ago. Hmm. And you love spreading positive messages and positive energy. That's good. But today you haven't felt well. Yeah, there's been a lot of people who have popped in today and just said they don't feel good. And it feels like something is weighing me down on my chest, but I'm going to do a meditation tonight to just give it a release. What have you done today, Kristen? To make you feel warm and accepted and loved. Because we just had Purple Moon come in and kind of share the same thing. And I asked, what kind of self-care are you doing, Purple Moon? She's like, hmm. Couldn't think of anything. So, other than working out. So, Kristen, what I will ask you the same thing. What self-care have you done today? Even though you hate the pondering questions. <laughs> I'll get it for you. So Skull Kid admits I don't feel like it would be beneficial to look for some new work as I'm currently waiting on my enlistment process. No, I would wait. I would wait, Skull Kid. It won't. It'll get. You'll get through that part. It's 
gonna be busy, so maybe <laughs> more hours. Maybe, yeah. Hmm. So let's give Meta Lunar his boundary question card. Even though he's not a fan. They're too hard. <laughs> They're too hard. I guess if the questions were easy, they weren't be... They wouldn't be pondering. That's true. You'd be like, easy, next card please. people to remember me when I'm no longer here. It's a big one. The pondering question cards don't do small questions. <laughs> they only do big ones. <laughs> Not sure. Wouldn't you want it to be a positive thing? A beautiful thing? Wouldn't you want them to say Mel Lunar was a beautiful person who helped me know how to live my life by an example? By being a great example? The next card will be like, what's the meaning of life? That one is in there. That one is in there. <laughs> you had to work, Kristen. Mm. You could still do mini self-care while you're at work. Is it really? No. I mean, it is in the deck, but I don't know if it was actually the next card. And the next card says, Would I be proud of myself if I spoke to other people in the same way that my thoughts speak to me? Am I being mean to myself in my head? Mm. <laughs> Negative self-talk is not self-love. You did go for a walk, though, to be in peace with nature. Ah. Mm. I was talking about... Doing a bath. How would I remember you if you were no longer in chat? I would remember how much you lovingly dislike the pondering question cards. <laughs> mm -hmm. You want them to remember me as someone who can make things better by being around. Like a little bubble of warmth, Meta Lunar. Like a light in the room. You were just shooting in the dark and didn't expect that to actually be a card. No, it definitely is. I think it says, what does life mean to me? And then what does love mean to me? Those are, those two cards are actually in there as questions. <laughs> they actually are in there as questions. For real. They're really in there. Alright, Master. What area of life do you want your room to be focused on? What kind of scents do I use? Mm, lavender. Rosemary. Eucalyptus, mint. So it can be, it can be relationships, it can be romance, it can be work, it can be self-reflection. I don't know why that came through. It can be a multitude of things. Hi, Brittany. You popped in at 4.44 p.m. Welcome, guys, to the treehouse. I'll let Master think about his room for a minute. 
you want to see the painting? We're painting our astral body. That's what this is. Our astral body being. Mm. I just put a mandala here for him. He's got this nice drippy background here on him. Anyway, this is what we've been painting, but we took a break to draw some runes and have a chat. But welcome, guys. Thank you so much for the raid. I'm glad to have you in, Brittany. If you guys do not follow Brittany yet, Brittany is also an artist on Twitch and her streams are really fun. I watch her during the day when I'm supposed to be working. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> and she's a lot of fun. She's a lot of fun. And she's got a lot of great people with her too in her community, so I should definitely check her out. You feel like the being is enlightened? Well, of course. I feel like that too. I feel like that too. Room closed in the in the corner? In the painting? Oh yeah. I forgot we did paint we did put runes on here already. Thank you, Daniel. I completely forgot that we did that already. <laughs> There's one here, and I think the other one is in here, so it got kind of lost. <laughs> it got kind of lost. There's one here and one here, but you it's glow-in-the-dark paint, so you won't see it until we turn on the blue light. Then you can see them. <laughs> so they're kind of like magical. They're hiding until you get the right atmosphere. Then they come out and say hi. <laughs> How about stability? How to master stability? Hmm. I mean, we can see what happens. I've never done an, a question like that, Master, but we can definitely see what happens. Let's, yeah, let's, let's see what happens. I've never done a question like that. Usually it's like relationships or, um, romance or work related or, you know, opportunities, something like that. But stability could be an interesting read. We can definitely see what comes out. Hmm. You can't decide whether to use a reward for rune or a card. I like the cards. The runes are really nice when you, if you want to just see what comes out, the runes can be nice, but they can be kind of all over the place because a rune has a different meaning depending on what you're asking. So that's why I'm like a little bit concerned about the stability question because I'm like mm, how do how's that gonna work with a rune but at the same time I'm gonna trust <laughs> so we'll see what comes through I definitely think the cards can I prefer the cards but that's just me but the runes can have really nice messages too it just depends on how you want to work <laughs> but let's do the rune for stability for master here It's, which is an interesting question, Master. So I'm very interested to see how this is going to turn out. Stability. Ooh, interesting rune to draw. I don't usually draw this rune either from the back. So we're going to see what it says. Mm. 
um, man, my mat is looking quite dirty. <laughs> it's a dirty mat now. <sighs> Alright. That's right. I'm a painter. I got paint on my fingers and all kinds of stuff, so what do you expect, right? This is a room here. Delay and patience. You may find yourself enmeshed in delays and constraints, maybe even ill health or oppression. But this room indicates. That there are that the tiresome that even though this may be a tiresome time these will all work out in their own good time and no amount of haste or worry on your part will cause them to resolve themselves any faster this rune always indicates a time of passing through a difficult learning situation. It's also known as crossing the abyss. Interesting. However, meeting this emotional challenge head on could be emotionally draining. However, doing this and conquering yourself and your fear, it can be the catalyst that drives you to overcome any future obstacles that may appear in your path later on. Wow. Actually, this is interesting. We're talking about stability. And I keep talking about self-love and people doing what is necessary for their own self-care every day to make themselves consistent. And you're talking about stability. This kind of feels like it's saying you might be wondering about this now because things are so chaotic outside of you and inside of you. And this room is kind of saying this is your final test, basically. Because after this, nothing else is going to have power over you or phase you in the same way ever again. So you will become more stable in yourself because of this crossing of the abyss. Many writings talk about crossing the abyss and the character building properties of severe constraint and when we can accept the fact that we often learn much that is useful from our troubles, we are evolving in both body and spirit. This room may also signify a need to think twice before taking on any new projects, for it shows that this time you have neither the ability nor the energy currently to carry them out successfully, so wait for things to calm down. This rune indicates that your needs as opposed to your wants. And when it appears, you should ask yourself if you are distressed over minor inconveniences, which you might be blowing out of proportion, or if you truly have an issue. So again, self-care. What do you need now? And is that something that you're willing to give to yourself? That is a very interesting one. 
So you'll have to... Hopefully that makes sense. I know there's a lot in there for that room. And we did ask an abnormal question, but I still think it's very fitting. It does make sense for sure. Mm, yeah. You just wanted to make sure you saw that Brit had to raid and run. She had to take care of her doggo. Oh, that's okay, CJ. I know she she was starting. She was on stream way before I was, so she's been streaming for a long time. <laughs> she's been streaming for a long time. No, it's okay, CJ. You're fine, dear. It's your first time seeing that rune. Yeah, that one hasn't been very common. That's not one. That one's not very common. I don't draw that one very often. Like rare. It's like rare that we draw that one. It's rare. Rare. Mm. Rare, Pepe. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. That could work. We may even use more acrylic for that. You're pretty pumped to be in the relaxing lo world of Luna right now. Thanks, CJ. I know our pain. It's always pretty relaxed here, though. It looks like an X, but it's actually one side is longer than the other and it's actually tilted more like an x is like this but this one is like like this so it is a bit different <laughs> you like to use that in various nicknames that's funny <laughs> even when you're not doing asmr you have a very soothing asmr like voice Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> we don't get out of hand too much. The dog will, though. <laughs> hey, Scotland. Welcome and glad to have you. How's the week been? Mm. I've actually been really tired. Mm, to tell you the truth, I've been really tired. Mm, so tired. <laughs> Some witchy stuff going on here. I like it. Thanks, Scotland. We're painting a. I'm doing a commission painting today. And it's, um. Hmm. I was asked to paint their energy, and so we did that in the background. And now we are working on their astral body. Mm. So that's what we're doing now. So that's what it is. What else? Mm. You 
guys want to listen to a really old CD from my childhood? I'll see if I can find it. Baby Luna's music? <laughs> Baby Luna? Oh, here it is. No! Hold on. <laughs> oh no, this is the Zen Meditation. We haven't listened to this in a long time, too. S Club... S Club 7? <laughs> I do know what S Club 7 is, and no, that's not what I mean. <laughs> Is just sleeping different or a bit exhausting? So the the moon had a lot to do with my exhaustion. Um, and when the moon comes, so does uh, you know, ant flow. So there's that too. S club. <laughs> then we shall attack the moon. No, but we are them. We can't attack the moon. Come on. <laughs> we can't. The cosmic treehouse on the moon. We can't attack the moon. I might have hyped up the CD for no reason because now I can't find it. Oh no, is this it right here? Yes. Nice. All right, we're in we're in business now. Sorry. My CDs obviously need to be reorganized because I'm clearly struggling to keep track of them. <laughs> Ain't no party like an S-Club party. Yeah. <laughs> Luna Knights prepare for battle. <laughs> you guys are, I think I call you guys star seeds. <laughs> prepare for battle. Star seedlings. Star seedlings. Uh, I like that. Star seedlings. Maybe I'll change it. It's more cutesy. And it fits into a tree better. Or star saplings. Mm. I like seedlings. Star force? Star fox? What is happening right now? What is happening right now? What is the, the chat is descending into chaos? <sighs> mm, I like it. You love S Club? Do you, Creed? You like Tina from S Club? I cannot remember that kind of stuff. I can tell you I know what S Club is, and I know I've seen it. And I know I've listened to it, but I can't remember specifics. Anyway, this is the CD from my childhood. Little, little baby me would, my mom would read me a story. And then turn on this music. And then I would slowly drift to sleep. Alright, Purple Moon Pondering Question. What's a CD? <laughs> what is this magic? What? What is this magic? So what gives me great joy? It's hard to know what gives you great joy when you have to master what gives you joy first. So what gives me great joy? What gives me great joy? The questions are meant to be pushing. 
pushing. You gotta get ready for the gym, CJ. Enjoy the gym. Enjoy the gym, hun. The Backstreet Boys? You had a girl on your street, Matthew, hide in her room for a week because the Backstreet Boys broke up. Poor thing. <laughs> I have nothing else to say other than poor thing. <laughs> what did she do when they merged with new kids on the block? Oh my gosh, who knows? be back in a bit. You're gonna be in my ears at the gym. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gym during the Rona season? Mm. Some places are opening up again. Maximum of what? Six people? Sometimes? I think by that point she had moved on to Marilyn Manson. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys are too funny. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. All right, let's put more green. A yellowish green. A bright yellowish green. Mm -mm. <laughs> She's a nurse practitioner. The gym takes a lot of protocols. Safer than the supermarket. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Some places have more control. More ability to manage than others. Right. I wouldn't be too worried. Unless you're like really susceptible, then I would be. Like my mom is uh, autoimmune compromised, so I wouldn't suggest she go. <laughs> you know? But she doesn't want to, so. <laughs> Which is her own choice, right? <laughs> That's her own choice. Well, very careful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Any just as careful as I would normally be. <laughs> Tell you the truth just as careful as I would normally be. You're a lurk, I'm always feeling your answers. Okay, perfect. Thank you for the lurk. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can never be 100%. That's true. That's true. Did you miss a lot, Ian Lee? Yeah, we made lots of progress. <laughs> Surprise. 
You have an autoimmune disease as well. Do you have any tips by chance? You just have to be careful about what you want to expose yourself to, right? Like depending on how compromised, you probably wouldn't want to eat at like a restaurant or anything like that, you know? You probably would have want to have control over that. <laughs> hey Venom999, welcome to the treehouse, dear. Like we would, we would already be quarantining ourselves to our own wings of the house. Like way before, way before this was even a thing. When my mom was in, when I was living with my mom, I would, anytime I didn't feel good or had something weird or I would just automatically wing myself in a different part of the house, you know, no contact kind of thing. So. And then when you're feeling better, you still be really mindful. You know, constantly washing your hands, constantly making sure that you're paying attention to what you could be contaminating. Also, thank you for the follow, JT. You can also um, focus on eating foods and taking vitamins that boost your immune system. Like, kind of consistently. But even more so when you do feel like you need a boost. Right? I say I had my own wing growing up a different wing in the house so we ended up I mean I had my own it kind of felt like that because I had access to my own bathroom so I just I would just like cook my food in my room and stay in my room most of the time and I had my own bathroom <laughs> so yeah it kind of felt that way Can we paint the astral body punching uh, punching the corona particle? What? <laughs> maybe it maybe it already is just by raising itself above it. Mm. It already is. Yeah. I'm very mindful of what I eat and all that, which is good. So you can definitely boost it with um 
vitamin C, vitamin D. Cranberries is also good. And zinc too, yeah, great, very nice. <laughs> extra sun, getting some, some extra sunshine too. Fresh air. Feeling better emotionally does have a huge effect on how your body feels and vice versa so if you need if you find you need a boost how do you emotionally feel start there say that because we had a lot of people today come in and they've been saying they don't feel well. So the first thing I've been asking everybody was what kind of self-care are have you done today? What kind of self-care have you done today? It's okay to not feel good. But, we can move ourselves through it easier and have it not be as bad if we do our self-care. Are you feeling extra irritable? Mm. Like you could just wring somebody's neck, maybe. Like you just can't, you just can't handle anything right now. Maybe you're really on edge. When was the last time you took care of yourself in a very nurturing, motherly way? Everybody who said they did not feel good today could only come up with one thing. If that, if that. Yeah, the flutes have a synth behind them. So again, this is what I used to listen to as a kid. <laughs> you read a chapter in a new book, did you, Creed? Nice. <laughs> You think a lot of people are stressed out. They are. Venom. They are. And you were on the list, right, Creed? <laughs> and you were number one on the list, right? List of people who love Creed. Creed, number one number one person on that list. <laughs> Numero uno. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Better be. Better be. Better be. Stressed out is your name, Skull Kid? What are you doing for self-care? The list is long also, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Hmm. Mm hmm. How would I remember 
you, Purple Moon? Hey, Sample, welcome to the treehouse, hon. I would remember... Hi, Crazy Bro. I would remember that... You always have very... Warm, almost childlike guides and energies. That's what I would remember. And you accept that and appreciate that and cherish that. You might start going back next week. Your buns are so cute. Thank you, Purple Moon. We are doing really well today. Wow, we went, well, we've actually gone over stream. We usually don't stream this late on Wednesday. <laughs> I watched you today, went online shopping, and ate my new favorite invention, pumpkin butter and peanut butter. There's pumpkin butter? This sounds amazing. <laughs> this sounds amazing. Pumpkin butter? I like sunflower butter. Mm, pumpkin butter. I want some pumpkin butter. Adult Cindy Lou Who? Is that what it said? Dang it, Skull Kid. <laughs> you find it so relaxing. I'm sure you do, yeah. It's your comfort. Mm. It's more like a pumpkin jelly. Like a pumpkin jam. Oh, is it like apple butter? But with pumpkin? Oh, gosh. That sounds so good. I love apple butter. I really do love apple butter, so I would probably really like pumpkin butter if it's like that. Yeah, we're talking about pumpkin butter right now. <laughs> it's gotta come out to find the rest. That's true, yeah. You're, s <laughs> you're spellbound. <laughs> You can get all kinds of Nutter Butters. The cookies, Nutter Butter cookies. My dad used to really love Nutter Butters. What is apple butter? What the heck? <laughs> what madness is this? Okay, hold on, let me show you. I'll show you what apple butter is. It's big, it's it's basically like applesauce, but it's filled with cinnamon and sugar. So they kind of call it a little bit of a jam because of that. Here, I'll show you. Let's open this picture right here. Mm. Open image in new tab. You guys are going to watch. Perfect. All right, here, I'll, I'll screen share this. Are you ready? Hi, XR. <laughs> Hi, hon. We're gonna look at apple butter. That is apple butter. So, smushed, pureed butters, butters, <laughs> apple. And look at all that brown. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It's really good. It's really good. So basically. The other thing that uh, <laughs> we're talking about is uh, pumpkin butter. <laughs> but no, welcome. Thank you so much for your subscription for two months. I appreciate that very much, dear. Thank you, thank you. Right in the middle of pumpkin apple butter discussion. 
Usually I eat it with toast, but you can put it on whatever you want. But usually it's with toast. You thought there was only one kind of butter, which was butter? <laughs> no, there's apple butter, there's peanut butter. There's apparently pumpkin butter. There's sunflower butter, which is one of my favorites. Sunflower butter. Spiritual Answers agrees that apple butter is delicious. It really is. <laughs> apple apple bottom, bottom jeans and boots with the fur creed. <laughs> apple butter jeans. No. <laughs> you better believe it, buddy. <laughs> apple butter on hotcakes. Mmm. Yeah. Pancake apple butter on pancakes would be too would be good too, yeah. Just like that. OMG, yeah. <laughs> good day, my beautiful friends. Hi, XR. You got us in the middle of talking about food. Hm. So spiritual answers goes to a Whole Foods place where they grind their own organic peanuts for peanut butter. Wow, that sounds awesome. You are memeing? Skull Kid. I bet there's even butter butter. <laughs> God, you guys are so funny. There is butter butter. <laughs> this is a whole new world of butter for me. tastes like pie filling except more pureed so what you're hearing is if it's spreadable it's butter sure why not <laughs> for simplicity's sake sure why not <laughs> you don't really eat sugar Spiritual answer is to usually look for organic sugar-free products. Mm. I try to, yeah. As much as possible. Mm -hmm. Thanks whoever mentioned the pumpkin butter. It was, who was it? Was it Ian? You glad you found the channel is extremely peaceful? You have awesome talent in art. Thank you, Sampy. Sorry, I just caught, caught up with your message. Oh yeah, Ian Lee mentioned the peanut butter and pumpkin butter. I thought so. Is there chocolate butter? Or is that just Nutella? <laughs> Welcome to the butter house. <laughs> you guys are so funny. <sighs> is there chocolate butter though? Okay, let's think about this realistically. I think you could technically have one, but the only one I can think of right now is an almond butter with cocoa in it. That's the only thing I can think of right now. Maybe somebody else has a different example of like a chocolatey butter that isn't quite the same thing as Nutella. <laughs> There's chocolate bread. It's gross. I've never tried chocolate bread, no. One of my favorite snacks is from Mexico. It says spiritual answers. It's simple too. Mango dusted with Mexican chili powder, which is delicious. I love mango. You're from England. Hey, Blender. Welcome in, dear. 
bread pudding, however, is delicious. I love bread pudding. And she's like, so the burn melts away from you. Really? <laughs> the mo our motto is, where we butter you up. <laughs> pick your, pick your butter. Pick your poisonous butter. What butter? No. <laughs> I do like very much mangoes. I've made a mango pie before. Like a mango fruit pie. It tastes like peach pie, but different. But less tangy. More mild. So I would probably actually really like mango with chili powder. As long as the chili powder is not too hot. Like, I don't know. I'm weird about spicy. I'm really weird about spicy food. I'm like, mm. Mm. Oh, I don't know if I want. Mm. You lived there for a year. You lived in Mexico for a year. That would be fun. There's mango butter too. <laughs> of course there is. <laughs> I used to make banana jam. banana jam every Christmas I would make like a whole crock pot of banana jam and uh, hand out the jars at Christmas time when I was working in an office and when I worked at the hospital is that the sequel to Space Jam maybe Yeah, so it's really handy because you can use leftover brown bananas. So you wait till the bananas are brown. So all the brown bananas that you don't want to eat and you're tired of making banana bread, make some banana jam. And it's actually really good. A little bit of lemon juice. And uh, it keeps it fresh. I used to put it on... Believe it or not, it's not good with peanut butter. It's actually not good with peanut butter. I tried it with peanut butter. I did not like it. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Angel, for the follow, hun. Welcome in. Glad to have you. So I would actually put it mostly by itself. Or no, maybe I, tro maybe I tried it with Nutella. Because I was like, chocolate and banana. Mmm, that sounds good. I think that's what I tried to do, and it was not. Because the lemon in the banana made it a little too tangy to like it with the Nutella, the chocolate Nutella. So, correct, I'm standing myself corrected. It was not peanut butter, it was Nutella. Banana jam sounds amazing. I would give away jars of it on Christmas time, at Christmas time, and people would really enjoy it. They'd be like, what is this? <laughs> what is it? I served a year as a relief worker to bring food, medicine, etc. To people who were poor that lived in the city dumps. That's so nice. Spiritual answers. What a great way to serve other people. Do you make it the same way as other jam, like heating it up? So I made it in a crock pot. So yeah, you basically do it like you would another jam. Except I used, I used organic cane sugar. And I didn't use any preservatives. Like for me, the lemon juice was the preservative. So I just used a little extra lemon juice. I think it would be nice on a toasted tea cake or a crumpet. It would be, yeah. Does anyone else here like goji berries? I do like goji berries. Surely there is some type of honey butter. Okay, let's find out. I don't know. I've never heard of a honey butter. Honey butter recipe. Yeah, there is. 
Mm. Butter and honey until smooth, and then cover in the refrigerator. What do you do with honey butter? Oh, there's cinnamon honey butter. Oh, it's like you use it with biscuits. Interesting. Hmm. We're learning so much. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Fried butter on a stick. I have not tried it. Apparently that's a thing though. <laughs> Apparently that's a thing. But that's not a thing that I have ever tried. You have jars of brownie butter? It's hard work, not because of anything about the work itself, but the children, it was heartbreaking for an entire year. Mm hmm Yeah, the emotional, sometimes the emotional, the emotional part is the part that takes the toll. A butter sandwich. <laughs> Okay, okay. Forget food, we're just gonna start eating butter now. <laughs> they really do deep fry butter though. If you go to like a carnival. They really do deep fry butter. That's not just a thing. That is said. That is an actual thing that happens. Butter and sugar in a bowl, yum. My stepsister used to eat that. <laughs> She'd take a spoonful of butter and stick it in sugar and then... Oh. I couldn't watch her do it. <laughs> I couldn't watch her. <sighs> Maybe a butter stick in a hot dog bun would be nice. Ugh. <laughs> Ian Lee does say that she likes fried Oreos. Hmm. I think I would have a really hard time finishing it. Like, I got... Okay, so I got the tiramisu sent to me, right? The other day? Yesterday. I couldn't even finish the whole thing. I had to, like, eat a couple bites and stop. Eat a couple bites and stop. It took me two days to finish one piece of tiramisu cake. Like, literally almost exactly two days. <laughs> or at least 24 hours. <laughs> almost 24 hours. I don't know if I could... If something that was that rich, I don't know if I could, like, eat a lot of it, basically. Yeah, you left because it was just too hard to handle emotionally. Mm. Might be a wimp, but I don't necessarily think so. I served in combat twice, but starving children really hit me hard. Yeah. It would. What a way to feel like you can't do enough. Yeah, what a way to feel like you're... Even though you're doing a lot, you're still not doing enough. <laughs> goji is really good in this smoothie. You use the goji powder now. Mm. I do like goji berries. You show the chat as a haven of cultured and sophisticated connoisseurs of butter. <laughs> 
Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> they use they use it as a flavoring in some medicines, actually, really. Yeah, I was just gonna say I usually do dried goji berries, because for some reason they're cheaper. Like if I'm if I'm trying to get goji berry anything, it's freaking pricey. But if I get like dried fruit and goji berries are in there, I can get away with it. Like it's not as pricey. But so I often eat goji berries, like, as dried. Because trying to do it the other way is, like, way too much money. I don't know, I have money doesn't grow on trees for me right now. I haven't finished growing my money tree, so... <laughs> it's still in baby stages. So yeah, that's usually how I do it, is they're, they're be dried. You can get chocolate covered goji berries? Really? Mmm, that sounds good. It's very tart. Goji berry is very tart. I'm gonna like, mmm. Not, not tart like a lemon though. And not tart like a lime. But it's tart in its own way. If that makes sense. It's not quite the same as like a lemon or lime, but it is very tart. Hey, Shibshia, welcome to the treehouse, hon. Almost hit bitter. I almost said bitter, yeah. But not a gross bitter. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> it's not quite gross. Like, you think sour and bitter, and you're like, mm, no thanks, I don't think I want to try it. It's actually really good. Hi, Devo. Welcome back, sweetheart. You wanted to pop in and say hi? Hi. <laughs> Kiwi Gatorade is literally the bee's knees. Four zero? Four over zero? Hmm. Is there such thing as goji butter? It's probably expensive. Like, it's probably really expensive. <laughs> Blender says, I haven't had kiwi in ages. I fancy one now. I'll scoop kiwi out with a spoon and just eat it. That's really good. Hmm. Would you say, would you agree? Talking about kiwi, those of you who had goji berry, wouldn't you think that goji berry and kiwi are pretty close as far as tartness goes? You have hair like mine, Devo. How do I secure my buns? They're just, it's just folded hair. It's just folded hair. And then I'll barely safety pin part of it. Yeah, they are pretty close. So goji and kiwi. So for those of you who have no idea what a goji berry tastes like, it's very similar to kiwi. Sort of. But a bit different. You think chocolate covered kiwi would be interesting? Mmm. I'd be okay with chocolate covered kiwi as long as it was dark chocolate. Like, I think a milk chocolate would be. Gross. Let's do dark chocolate. <laughs> dark chocolate with fruit, please. <laughs> mm. You were right. I got on the course. Didn't you? Was I right, James? You might have to remind me. <laughs> I'm glad I was right, though. Congratulations. <laughs> with clips? with safety pins like with um not they're not safety pins they're bobby pins no hairspray luna lu who <laughs> instead of cindy lu who <laughs> you guys are so funny that was a very good disgust face mm. 
I'm trying to wiggle my nose. Unfortunately, you can't have any chocolate anymore. That's sad. Any? Like, none at all? Are you very happy? Thank you. You're welcome, James. I'm glad you're happy. You gave up chocolate because you would binge eat chocolate, Devo? Mm. <laughs> you, you were in one extreme, so you jumped to the other extreme. You had too much, now you're just not going to have it at all. <laughs> You'll find your own balance. Yeah, pat on the back for James. Oh, congratulations, James. Chocolate drives you nuts. <laughs> Stole my joke, spiritual answers. All about Cindy Lou Who, Luna Lou Who. Yours was very direct, Skull Kid. You can only eat a small amount. Oh, the stuff they use to replace the sugar in it. Oh, really? Hmm. You can't even do the organic stuff? I've never heard of a malt... malt ether? I've never heard of this. I also haven't eaten cake, fuzzy drinks, or chips. <laughs> nice. No, even organic chocolate has sugar in it. Mm. I don't- what's a malt- what is this malt- Maltesers? What is this? I've never heard of this. It's a UK food. Mm. Is it like a malt shake? It's like Whoppers. Oh, is it? Mm, I could never handle Whoppers very much. It's too dry. You liked black licorice, but even that's gone now. Those chocolatey ball things, yes. <laughs> yeah, the ones that are kind of powdery on the inside. One of your favorite drinks was Malta. Mm, I would try Malta. They're more powdery. Are they? More powdery than that? I always thought they were already pretty powdery. But at the same time, not. Because I remember trying to chew on them and they would hurt your mouth. Like the roof of your mouth. So maybe not quite as powdery as maybe I'm expecting them to be. Malta is amazing, but alas, it's full of sugar. <laughs> I would try Malta. You think Maltese or does a milkshake? Mm. I would imagine it being like a malt shake. That's what I was picturing. Like a malt shake? Like a malty milkshake. Yeah, we have Milky Ways. <laughs> yeah. We do. We do. Alright, we're gonna start maybe finding somebody to, to raid because it's almost 6pm. We've been streaming for a long time today. I think we would enjoy sharing with somebody else. East Coast in the USA. I'm technically Midwest. Oh yeah, Devo, you're in Ohio? You're not too far. And Spirit Council is in, o is in Ohio. Yeah, not too far. Milky Way is better than Mars bars. 
Ian Lee's in New York. Nice. Nice, nice. So glad I got you before we all ended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, we usually don't stream for this long. Usually I stop at about five, but it's about six now. So I'll have to do my own self-care and make myself some food. Mm, a bath sounds really nice. Because I've been telling people to take baths today. So I'll probably do that. Mm, get really cozy. Get super cozy. Yeah. So we'll find somebody to raid, share ourselves with. I'm not sure who... Who's on at the moment. Who's doing art? Do you want to do an art person? Let's see if anybody's doing traditional art. Anybody else? Hmm. Are any suggestions for people who would be maybe we would enjoy, we think we would enjoy. Tom, Tom thinks. Will we be back tomorrow? We will be back tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Heart support? Are these your, are these your suggestions, spiritual answers? Tom thinks? Let's look at what Tom thinks does. Oh, I have to watch a commercial first. <laughs> he, Tom, he, so his name is Tom. He builds and performs live animated puppet shows. Oh my God, I like it. Experience the magic of cartoon characters that respond to you. Oh my God. Yeah, this is who we're going. <laughs> oh, he's just chatting today though. Aw, oh, nuts. Aw, <laughs> oh, nuts. I'm still- I still want to follow this person, because I like puppet shows. <laughs> I'm still gonna- I think this is who we're gonna raid. Because I really- Anytime I had an option to do a project in school, it was a- it was a stinking puppet show. <laughs> it was a stinking puppet show. So, I'm very excited to pop in and say hi. So that's who we're going ahead. We've never seen this person before. Hopefully we enjoy, it looks like they do puppet shows and they're just chatting today. So lots of positive energy, most likely from them today. I'll probably drop them a follow because I want to see what kind of puppet show they run. It sounds very interesting to me. We will be live tomorrow, guys, tomorrow evening. So thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Have a great night. Thank you for hanging out, and we'll be live again tomorrow. See you later in the treehouse. Share the love in the raid. Bye, guys. <laughs>